Thomas Paine. Thomas Paine. Thomas Paine. Sam Adams. Sam Adams. Sam Adams. Benjamin Franklin. Benjamin Franklin. Benjamin Franklin. These men spoke up for what they thought was right. From their courage came such documents as the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution of the United States. United States. From their willingness to speak what was sometimes unpopular but right, we enjoy such liberties as freedom of speech, the right to keep and bear arms, and freedom of religion. There are those who still wish to oppress our freedoms, and there are still patriots willing to stand up and defend life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Men like Zeb Bell, who honor our founding fathers and what they stood for. It's now time for Zeb at the ranch, speaking up and defending your freedoms. Brought to you by Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers and all of the other great advertisers on the program. And now, Zeb Bell. I ran across these two bumper Snickers, and I thought I'd share them with you this morning. This one, not many words, but think about it. My alone time is for everyone else's safety. (laughs) I love that one. And then here's another one that I can relate to. At my age, getting lucky means walking into a room and remembering what I came in for. Good morning, everybody. Here comes Kate Smith. God bless America. Followed by a patriot with our Pledge of Allegiance. Come on, be proud. Call in. And a good, good morning, <clears throat> excuse me, I've got a cough, and I'll tell you right now, I'm probably going to uh, have that problem during the course of the morning, and I apologize up front. Zebeth Ranch, I'm Zeb Bell with our major sponsor, your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers, all seven locations serving you with a big spring tire sale going on right now. Along with some of our great advertisers like Burley Physical Therapy and Rehabilitation at 1263 Bennett Avenue Suite 2 in Burley, helping you get back to being you. Right now, let's go to the phone line and have our Pledge of Allegiance. Good morning. Good morning, sir. Well, my friend. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Hey, call back in a little bit, buddy. I appreciate it. Thanks, Doug. Have a wonderful day. Appreciate you doing that. I remembered what I went into a room for the other day, too. I counted as a win. It was a bathroom, (laughs) but I still remember. (laughs) Well, it's a doggone good thing you remembered. (laughs) Okay. Thanks. Talk to you in a little bit. Thank you. Right now, it's time for the weather. And the weather brought to you by our friends, K and R Rental Roger and the entire crew. They throw open the doors at 7 o'clock in the morning and they say, come on in, come on in. 256 South, 600 West, Hayburn. Easy to find. Right there on the Burley Paul Highway. You couldn't miss it. If you wanted to, no, it's right there. And the number to call for questions and answers, 678-3122. They've got all your your tools and equipment you need, especially for spring cleanup time. So get a hold of them today. K and R Rental on the Burley Paul Highway, six seven eight three one two two. And right now here's Gina with the weather. The days are getting warmer and calmer as we make our way towards the weekend. Here's your forecast for Zeb at the Ranch. We are expecting partly sunny skies today with a high of 62. Winds out of the east-northeast right around 12 miles an hour, gusts as high as 23 miles an hour. For tonight, partly cloudy skies, still a little on the breezy side, but we are expecting a low of 39. For tomorrow, sunny skies with a high of 64. Tomorrow night, clear with a low of 40. For Saturday, even better. Sunny skies, high near 66, still a little on the the breezy side for Saturday night, clear and 40. For Sunday, we do have a 20% chance of uh, thunderstorms in the forecast, mostly in the afternoon. Other than that, sunny skies with a high of almost 70 for Monday. That could continue with a chance of rain showers before noon, mostly sunny by Monday afternoon and a high of 64. That is your weather for Zeb at the Ranch. I'll take it. Thank you, Gina. Appreciate it. And the weather brought to you by K&R Rental. Hello, Roger and the crew. Roger and out at 256 South, 600 West of Hayburn. Good, good people serving you at K&R Rental. Number to call, 678-3122. Merv May, come on in here. Let's sell some cattle. All right. 
Hey, good set of steer calves there. Here to get all of 31 moment of hand, 31 going out of hand, 32. Two. That's the chant of what I think is the world's best auctioneer, Merv May, over at the Burley Livestock Sale Yard, 1100 Occidental Avenue in Burley. Sale time today, today at 1030, the sale that works for you. Merv May, Cade, Roggy, Lance, Udy, all of them right there at Burley Livestock Sale Yard. Today they're expecting cattle coming in from the Hurtado Ranch over at Malda. How are you folks doing this morning? 100 head of good four to 700 pound yearlings and Guy Montgomery is coming off the hill from Malda at 50 head of calves coming in. Spackman Ranch at Park Valley, Utah bringing in 20 head of yearling heifers weighing about oh six and a half and C.L. Semper over at Gooding. Hello C.L. 20 head of mixed calves coming in. Jared Shrank of Declo, 50 head of 500 pound calves and they're going to have butcher cows coming in from Acme Dairy, TLK Dairy and the Funk Dairy. Sale time, 1030. Merv, sell those steers. All right, hey, good set of steer calves there. Here to get all of 31, one and a half, 31, one and a half, and 32, two and a half, three and a half, half, one thirty four, four and a half, and five and a half, five and a half, and a half, one thirty five fifty, one thirty five and a half, selling dollar thirty five. Zeb Bell, get the bottom again. And we appreciate it, Merv. Thank you. And don't forget, sell time today at 1030. Oh, my goodness, we've got a lot of things to do this morning. And right now, Old Wheels is perched over there with his finger on the button. Let's have this good word for Brad Little. For governor, who can conservatives trust? Not Boise developer Tommy Alquist. Tommy Alquist's tax plan would raise taxes on everything from farm equipment to haircuts. Tommy's given thousands of dollars to liberal Democrat politicians. And Tommy didn't even vote for President Trump against Hillary Clinton. Tommy Alquist is not one of us. And Raul Labrador, he stuck taxpayers with the bill for his luxury SUV and used his campaign cash to pay his wife over $100,000. Raul Labrador's part of the swamp. Idaho needs a trusted conservative. Brad Little is pro-life, pro-marriage, and pro-Second Amendment. And Brad Little believes in lower taxes. It's why Brad Little voted for the largest tax cut in Idaho's history. And as lieutenant governor, Brad Little cut his own budget every year, saving taxpayers money. Brad Little, the conservative we can trust for governor. Paid for by Brad Little for governor. Vicki Rich, treasurer. Uh, thank you very much. And don't forget, ladies and gentlemen, what we've got scheduled for day today on the program. I'll just give you a couple of quick reminders. 906, we're going to have our Chamber of Commerce report. I believe Shay Lee's going to be calling in from the Minicasha Chamber of Commerce. And then, of course, at 917, really a segment that a lot of people really have told me they enjoy, and that's the Casha Regional Hospital. And then, of course, later on this morning, Casha County School Days, Rita Ramsey, our business salute. And at 1030, a dear friend returns to the program, former representative. Representative for the state of Idaho, Bert Stevenson, talking about the absolute insane idea of fish flush taking our water to put more into the Columbia and Snake for a fish flush. Makes no sense to me whatsoever. Uh, I want to remind you about our dear friends at Ramsey Heating and Electric at 2600 Overland Avenue in Burley. They are there. They get there early at 730 in the morning till 5 Monday through Friday for all your heating, cooling, that's coming up, cooling time, and electrical needs. They have it all. They have been in business for almost 60 years. Yeah, you heard me right, 60 years. I mean, what a tribute. What a great family. What a fantastic business serving you. Ramsey Heating and Electric at 26. 600 Overland Avenue in Burley. Number to call 678-0459. And uh, I want to get this in because it's very important. I've had a couple of calls. There was uh, some people that were afraid that they were going to miss Lunch Bunch. No, no, no. Contraire. Lunch Bunch is next Thursday. Next Thursday. And we'll look forward to having you there with us at Denny's Restaurant. Mm-mm, good. 611 North Overland and Burley. It is true. It's America's Diner. Oh, Thomas and the whole crew. Michelle, everybody over there has just been so nice and helpful. And you'll love the food. You're going to really find out there are nice people serving you at Denny's Restaurant for our Lunch Bunch next Thursday. Of course, you can stop in any time, all the time. Breakfast, lunch, or dinner at Denny's Restaurant. 611 North Overland in Burley. You stop in and see them today. 
Governor Jerry Brown, and I'm going to ask you folks, I am so incensed against this pugnacious, very obtuse individual. (laughs) I'm cleaning up my language about him. (laughs) Off the cuff and in private conversations, you won't hear me be that nice. Governor Jerry Brown of California, you know what? We should all take the time, and I'm serious about this. And you're probably saying, well, he's not our governor. He's the governor of California. I know that. But we should all take the time to send him a letter or an email and let him know that we, up here in Idaho, with a whole lot more common sense, we despise him as a governor and hold him accountable for what happens with illegal aliens as we oftentimes get and will continue to get the spillover coming up here to the state of Idaho. I'm going to take the time. I'm going to, after this program, I'm going to research where to get the emails to or the address so I can, I know it may sound like it won't do any good, but I just, it'll vent my feelings. I want to tell Jerry Brown that I absolutely despise the way he's doing things against federal laws that are binding all the states together in this great United States of America. And how dare he, little bitty Jerry Brown, Mr. Moonbeam, do things that are absolutely arbitrary and illegal against the rest of us. I urge you to do that. Uh, when I get the address next Monday, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put that on the air. And if I'm fortunate enough to get an email address, I'm going to give all of that. And we'll just start, I hope, I think my audience will, start sending notes of uh, perhaps negativity against Governor Jerry Brown for his insolent attitude and brainless attempts to denigrate the United States. Calls are welcome, 436-2244-1-866-927-4587. Don't forget Kevin Williams, watch your vote May 15th for running for the state representative, District 27. Kevin is pro-Second Amendment, Kevin is pro-teacher support and education, and he is very supportive of our police and agricultural economy. Fresh new ideas for a stronger, more productive Idaho, paid for by Kevin Williams for state State Representative District 27, Kevin Williams, Treasurer. Hold on, caller, I'll be right with you. And also, don't forget, May 15th, re-elect Tim Darrington as Cache County Commissioner, District 3. Tim knows that Cache County has a lot to offer with its heritage and history, and he wants to help move the county forward. Tim Darrington has been very involved in updating county policy reimbursements and in updating Cache County software. Re-elect Tim Darrington as Cache County Commissioner, District 3, May 15th, paid for by the committee to elect Darrington for Commissioner Gail Erickson, Treasurer. Caller, a good morning to you. And a good morning to you too, my friend. Thank you. You know, this incident about the uh, Southwest Airline and that uh, turbo on the engine? Yes. You know, you have a similar thing in your pickup. It's called a turbo. Yes. And I'll tell you what, I was coming up a, a mountain pass one time from California, and my turbo exploded in the truck, and it made an explosion like you cannot imagine. I mean, it just, it was far more than a tire blowing out, and we didn't know what happened, and all of a sudden there was smoke and everything everywhere. But that's just a small example of what happened on this airline. Well, I will say this. Things come apart. It's pretty serious. Yeah, Keith, uh, now I'm starting to get really concerned because they've had other engines show the same possible major difficulty. And uh, Southwest Airlines and other airlines that use that particular style of airline or airplane, pardon me, I think there should be a grounding immediately. There should be a complete surveillance of what's going on, what might happen, and possibly a replacement. 
I tell you what, when I heard the story and I read about who was on board and I talked to some people that had friends on board that plane, and they said it was one of the most horrific and horrendous experiences you could ever have. Yeah, and it's an explosion beyond, you know, even your imagination. Yeah. But the thing of it is, there is no warning on this. When this thing blows, whether it be on a jet engine or on your pickup, it just happens, and... And you just got to be prepared. Well, Keith, in a time, I've got short time this morning, so let me. I don't want to just ramble on about this, but I want to ask you a question: Are there precautionary methods? Are there precautionary means that a person or a mechanic can look at and see if there's a structural damage or something that would lead up to that? Let's talk about the turbos in the cars and the pickups and or what might be applicable in that engine on the aircraft. Yeah, that's, it's just not much for warning. I mean, you look at something like that and inspect it, and it looks fine, but... It just everything the ter- the clearances on these these turbos and everything when they go around is so minute that it it'd be very very difficult to detect this before it happens. Okay, well, Keith, I appreciate you bringing that up. Really, you know much more about that particular circumstance than I would as far as the mechanical aspect. Thank you very much, and we'll follow that story. I appreciate it. God bless you and Nancy. Have a wonderful day. And I'll tell you what. That pilot, I just admire her to no end. Well, I admire any pilot to no end. Believe me, a great landing and takeoff is always wonderful. Thank you, Keith. I appreciate it. He's gone. All right, thank you. Hey, Pomerel Place, I am very proud to tell you about them because if you're living at home alone and kind of just putting at risk yourself uh, with the loneliness and the safety hazards and not eating well, I can't imagine what I'd eat if I were alone. Pop-tarts, look out, I'd clear the shelves. Uh, Miss medication, all of this. You should be aware of Pomerel Place, a place for senior living offering the ability for seniors to maintain their independence, both safely and comfortably please call them 677-8212 677-8212 Pomerel place a place for senior living at 1301 bennett street in burley calls are welcome come on help me out a little bit give me a jingle i love to visit with my friends and neighbors and the number 436-2244 don't forget to dino septic service oh they are expanding and getting bigger and serving more people my goodness they do the job that you and i don't want to do i don't want to stand out there and pump a septic tank i don't want to clean out a sewer and sink drain line (laughs) no and liquid waste removal no they do it all they do it all dino septic service easy fast fair friendly service and the number to call 436-6526 or in burley 678-1638 they are the best with that big truck that says smells cargo on the way get a hold of them today all right your calls are welcome and appreciated 436-224-1866-927-4587 i don't know if you heard anything about this story or not but it absolutely scares me and i am very concerned that we have lost in the world today our humanity, and our compassion. And I do believe that we are losing our belief in God and what the Bible says. When I heard a news story last night, it wasn't a very long news story, but it was enough to scare me, about over in Europe, they are killing, through abortion, babies in the womb, that have been diagnosed that will be born with Down syndrome. I'm letting that sink in a little bit. I absolutely am shocked. There are people that say, well, if we're going to have a baby, 
with Down syndrome, it will be nothing more than a burden on society. And the Dutch National Institute for Public Health and the Environment uses a blackboard to show a man with Down syndrome and how expensive he will be for society compared with quote-unquote normal people. It is hard for me to even relate this story this morning because I'm talking through clenched teeth. I would absolutely love to get my hands on anyone that perpetrates this thought of killing babies because they may not become or will be normal at birth. This sounds completely like the extermination of the Jews with Hitler. It's so dehumanizing and kind of a eugenic killing of the handicapped that I'm infuriated. I didn't know at age five that my sister and I would come down with polio. Oh, what would have happened at that time if it were legal in any country to say, oh my goodness, what a burden to the parents and society and education and everything else uh, medically. Let's just go out and hit them in the head with a hammer. Only normal people survive. Normal people. I read a story that might shock you a little bit because this has even been thought of here in this country, the United States. And I'm going to be talking to you about what took place in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. And I have the story right after I do this little break. Stand by, please. I want to remind you about our friends with Ramsey Heating and Electric and Lennox. Yes, they have Ervana defined as the ultimate level of comfort you'll achieve with the presence of a new Lennox home comfort system. And when you buy a new Lennox system at Ramsey Heating and Electric, you can get up to $1,700 in rebates. Ervana is just another way to make you feel better. So call Ramsey Heating and Electric at 678-0459 or visit them at RamseysOnline.com. Absolutely. And also, real quick, our friends at Burley Physical Therapy and Rehabilitation. Hello, Nick Greenwell. Holy moly. These are good folks at 1263 Bennett Avenue Suite 2 in Burley, helping you get back to being you. Now, you're outside working in the lawn, and you're a-raking, and you're a-digging, and you're doing all this stuff, and ooh, all of a sudden you got sore muscles and can't hardly stand it. Call them. They can help. Accident, surgery, whatever. They can help you recoup with the greatest of physical therapies. Call, make an appointment, 678-1191. Burley Physical Therapy and Rehabilitation, 1263 Bennett Avenue, Suite 2 in Burley, helping you get back to being you. Also want to remind you, if you got a good horse, you ride it. If you've got a great representative for District 27, you keep him. That's right, re-elect Fred Wood, District 27, on May 15th as your representative for District 27, paid for by the committee to re-elect Fred Wood, Steve Westfall, Treasurer. A story like this about the wanton killing of somebody that is deemed, quote-unquote, normal or not normal. Think about it, folks. Think about it. We've heard this before. Hemlock Society for the Elderly. And here's what is really worrying to me. A proposal to prohibit abortions in Pennsylvania when the sole reason is that the fetus has or may have Down syndrome passed the State House on Monday by a comfortable margin. And everybody's going, like myself, well, good, it was defeated. But wait a minute. There's a worry here. The Republican majority chamber voted 139 to 56 to send the Senate bill that supporters said would protect a vulnerable population. But wait a minute. Let's back up just a little bit. 56 people 
sitting in that Pennsylvania House were absolutely voting to go ahead and kill Down Syndrome babies. Yes, the bill was defeated 139 to 56. But the 56 people worry me. They are representing their constituents. They are representing evil. Evil. And those 56 people really should be under scrutiny to be thrown out of office. What are your thoughts? Give me a call, please. 436-2244-1-866-927-4587. Surely this must bother you and concern you. It scares me to death. Idaho needs Nonini. Bob Nonini for lieutenant governor. Vote May 15th for proven effective conservative leadership. Bob Nonini has 25 years experience in local and state Republican politics. He believes in quality, affordable health care and parental choice and education and wants to create a positive business climate with limited government involvement. Vote for Bob Nonini for lieutenant governor on May 15th. Paid for by the committee to elect Bob Nonini lieutenant governor. Treasurer R. Scott Hoag. Calls welcome 436 2244 127 Give me a jingle on the landline, please, as we carry on for this morning. And evidently, if that story doesn't get your interest peaked, I don't know what will. Please give me a call on that. Um, let's see, what else have we got here? Oh, no more Castro's. No more Castro's in Cuba. The family name has been put asunder. And the new guy, by the way, he was the only one on the ballot. (laughs) What a phony election in Cuba. And he was pushed by the Raul Castro administration as he retires. The new guy is Miguel Diaz Canal, and he's not a good guy. He is not a good guy. Caller, good morning. You're on the air. Hi. I don't want to talk about the Castro, so I was finishing up a cup of coffee and I hurried to get you called. Um, on killing children, killing babies, um, that shows how far the American people have moved away from our God. Couldn't agree more. Couldn't agree more. Now, let me ask you something, Chris. Most people, and and I know this is true because I've seen it happen day after day after day, when you have a vote and something that you consider evil uh, going down in defeat, everybody goes, oh, good, it's gone. But you know what? You have to worry about the ones that voted for the evil. And that 56 vote back in Pennsylvania, that scares me, does it? Not you? Yes, yes. 56 out of how many? 139 to 56 was the vote, and those 56 people almost represent half. I mean, this is bothersome to me. Uh Uh-huh, yes. And that's the sad thing, because um, you and I are old enough to remember that when, when Sunday morning was sacred and Sundays were sacred, and almost every family went to church together, and a big part of their life was the influence of the church. And now then the churches are almost empty, trying to get something going in a church that can increase your membership and get people to come in. Man alive, you've got to have a pastor that can fly, nearly. And... and I really am amazed at the people who are going into the ministry or church leadership, and our country is starving for our faith back. Yeah, you know, and to tie in what's going on over in Europe and other countries where they disregard of human life or value of human life, uh, I just absolutely, I get a chilled feeling. 
oh, well, you have this problem. You're going to be too expensive for society, so here, you're going to die. Oh, yes, you're going to have a baby with Down syndrome. Well, we can't have that because it's way too expensive. Here, we're going to have an abortion. Your baby will die. What kind of a sinister, black, dark, evil society are we even letting come in when they talk about killing for normalcy? Do you know what's the matter? And I, I am sorry to say this because uh, uh, scientific discovery is amazing and it's wonderful, but yet we know too much about that baby before it's born. And that's what worries me because I have, I know several Down syndrome children. I do too. And they are the most wonderful people you can have. They give you a hug if you're ugly or dirty or short or tall. They just love you. How many other people accept you like that? I agree. And, you know, uh, I'm glad you brought that up because uh, in high school we had a Down syndrome uh, boy that went to high school with us. And I don't want to elaborate too much on this because I'll get too emotional, but you know what? He was so kind. He was so gracious, and I will never forget that uh, he was helping uh, manage the track team, and I was on the track team as a shot putter and a discus thrower, and he'd come over and go, boy, that was a good one, Zeb, do it again. You know, I, The inspiration and the smile on his face, wow. I mean, that just, uh, it brings tears to my eyes now thinking about him, but what a, what a great human being. He was happy all the time. Are we sure that the Down syndrome people are not our angels amongst us? Could very well be. Could very well be. Think about that. You know, I, I gotta go. I gotta go back though. And when I think about the the way evil has permeated our society and other societies, humankind in general, and you think about those fifty six that voted to go ahead and allow the killing and aborting of Down syndrome babies, I, I'm not going to be anything but blunt. I'd like to have five minutes in a room with them and lock the door because I think they need a personality adjustment. Well, and I'd like to know the age of those 56 and possibly something about their background. Amen. Because it's possible that they've never heard a Christian uh, sermon. Think 10 or 20 or 30 years from now, Chris, when possibly you and I will not be here, what about a society that says, oh, well, we have to have a perfect society. If you are not going to be six foot one, blue eyed, and able bodied, you are not allowed to live. You know, I'm, that's not even facetious because it could happen. Well, that's Adolf Hitler. Amen. I've got to run, but I, I remind our kids. All right, bye-bye. Uh, take care, Chris. Thank you so much. This story just, oh, I am infuriated, and I'm not going to apologize. Calls are welcome, 436-2244-1-866-927-4587. Please give me a call. Uh, you can't sit there and not be enraged as to the evil that's in our society. Barry Equipment and Rental Sales Service and Parts, 159 West Highway 30 in Burley. Hello, Juan. And over at 465 Addison Avenue West in Twin Falls, Eli and in Nampa. I'm telling you what, they've got it all. Have you looked at your lawn the last couple of days? I'm telling you what, the grass is growing. And if you've got a lot of lawn and a lot of grass, you better consider going in there and checking out the walker mowers. Oh, my. Available in the Twin Falls and Burley locations. These are something then you can really mow like a pro. And don't forget, check out all the Bobcats, all the equipment and rentals, retail equipment sales at Berry Equipment and Rental. Burley, Twin Falls, and Nampa serving you. Caller, I'll be right there. Don't go away. I want to remind everybody again about Irvana. Defined as the ultimate level of comfort you'll achieve with the presence of a new Lennox home comfort system. When you buy a new Lennox system at Ramsey Heating and Electric, you can get up to $1,700 in rebates. Airvana is just another way to make you feel better. So call Ramsey Heating and Electric at 678-0459 or go online, ramseysonline.com. Good morning, caller, and thank you. 
Good morning, Zed. You know, uh, you know where this is going is, is frightening because um, there are children who are much more severely impaired than our Down syndrome children. Yes. And, uh, you know, what, what about them? Oh, some of those are drug babies, and who did that? The parents did that to them. Absolutely. Because of their habits. Absolutely. And, you know, what if somebody says, well, you know, you've got the potential for a drug baby, let's get rid of it. Well, that just means that the parents have an easy way out. If they do drugs, they don't have to keep or be responsible for the little one that they have. Yeah, but Linda... Here's another thing, what if our society suddenly begins to say, well, you know, this, and you talked about the Hemlock Society a little bit, what if our seniors when they are no longer productive, are considered to be too expensive. There you go. There you go. And you know what? Let, let's just let, people. let's just hit the nail right on the head squarely with a hammer. Number one, I have a physical infirmity. I have two terrible, broken up, and disabled legs. I don't make any bones about it. You, as a dear friend, I don't think are going to be upset if I say you have a sight problem, right? Yes, I do. Okay, and I know many, many people that have various physical uh, infirmities. What is going to happen in a society? and I'm not far out on a limb when I say this, what's going to happen in a society where they say, well, medicinally, we can't afford to let you have this treatment, so you're going to have to go without, and quite frankly, we don't need you anymore. And we start eliminating people out of the normal category and only let the normal live because they're not a drain on anybody's pocketbook. I am doggone scared that this is where we're headed in the world, not just here, but in the world society. Yeah, and that's, it's, a, it's a world that has forgotten their God. Everyone and should... Everyone should be... In a terrible direction. Absolutely. Everyone really? should be very fearful of the evil that's in society today, regardless of the country. It's in the world. Evil is in the world, and it's got to be stopped. Linda, God bless you for calling in. I appreciate it. Thank you. You are welcome. You've got a little bit of, or have had a little bit of static this morning. It's kind of a snapping sound, not the white noise that we hear so often and think of the static. It seems to have, it's intermittent, and it seems to have cleared up at this point. Okay, well, sometimes we have trouble with the lines. I don't know if it's uh, still being of concern. Let us know, and we'll try to make a correction. Thank you so much. it, It usually isn't over here. Okay. I usually over here in Hebron, I get really good results. But anyway, God bless you, Zeb. All right. Everything that you do. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. You are welcome. See you next week. Yeah, you betcha. And wheels over at the main studio. If you are hearing anything, let us know, and we'll make a correction at the top of the hour, hopefully a correction on a different line. I want to remind you this weekend, the big Lowry Estate Auction up in Shoshone and the location, 521 North, 650 West. Look for the signs of the Bennett Boys Auction Service. Joe Bennett and the crew, oh, this is going to be a sale. I'm looking at some outstanding equipment, loaders, tractors, backhoes, hanging equipment, rock pickers, farm equipment, cars, pickups, trucks. I mean, you miss this sale, you're really going to miss something. This is an outstanding sale put on by the Bennett Boys Auction Service this coming Saturday up in Shoshone. The Lowry Estate Auction. Look for the signs, and I told you it already starts at 10 a.m. The Bennett Boys Auction Service. No sale too big, no sale too small. The Bennett Boys. They they sell them all. Ah. Caller, good morning. You're on the air. Good morning, Zeb. You know me. I'm absolutely opposed to murdering any baby. I just don't think it's right. I think everybody ought to have their chance at life. And I can't understand people that say, well, I don't like this kid, so we're going to do away with him. Or I don't like that kid. We're going to do away with him. And, you know, we do the same thing in our criminal system. We let the criminal run over everybody, and it's wrong. Why, why would we let criminals run over everybody and 
not protect young kids. Well, I'll tell you what, that's Governor Jerry Brown's philosophy in California. He is absolutely of a primate mind, meaning that he has the brain of a monkey living in a tree. I absolutely have no use for the man, and I'm going to let him know as such in a letter or email and tell him I don't want his kind of philosophy to be permeated across the United States. Well, I think it's dead wrong to, you know, take any group of people and say, hey, we are not going to have you. We let the criminals get by with everything in the world, and yet we'll condemn a kid that has never, ever done anything to anybody. Since when, Jerry, since when, and you know the answer to this because you're a Christian man, but since when does mankind have the right and the ability to play God? We don't. We get in trouble when we do. Amen. Jerry, thank you for your call. You're a blessing to have on the air. Thank you so much. You have a wonderful day, and may the Lord bless you and all them little children out there listening. All right, buddy. And that includes the ones that are 90 years old, too. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, Right now, Wheels is uh, ready to go. We've got a good word for Representative Fred Wood, and then we'll have our weather forecast. Re-elect Representative Fred Wood, District 27. Here's Fred's views on health care. Zeb, the American health care system is not sustainable because it is too expensive. I will continue funding more primary care residency positions to increase access to primary and preventive care. I will also continue to explore ways to decrease the cost of pharmaceutical drugs, a primary driver of health care costs. We must reduce health care costs. Vote May 15th. Representative Fred Wood, District 27, paid for by the committee to re-elect Fred Wood, Steve Westfall, Treasurer. And it's time now for our weather forecast brought to you by our friends at Mount Harrison Audiology and Hearing Aids. The lovely doctors, Christine Pickup and, of course, Courtney Mitchell, serving you with all your hearing health care at Mount Harrison Audiology and Hearing Aids right behind the Minidoka Hospital across from the emergency room. The number to call for a hearing screening appointment, 311. 311- Two zero nine five seven Mount Harrison Audiology and Hearing Aids. And right now, here's Gina with the weather. The days are getting warmer and calmer as we make our way towards the weekend. Here's your forecast for Zebeth Ranch. We are expecting partly sunny skies today with a high of 62. Winds out of the east-northeast right around 12 miles an hour. Gusts as high as 23 miles an hour. For tonight, partly cloudy skies. Still a little on the breezy side, but we are expecting a low of 39. For tomorrow, sunny skies with a high of 64. Tomorrow night, clear with a low of 40. For Saturday, even better. Sunny skies, high near 66. Still a little on the breezy side for Saturday night, clear and 40. For Sunday, we do have a 20% chance of uh, thunderstorms in the forecast, mostly in the afternoon. Other than that, sunny skies with a high of almost 70 for Monday. That could continue with a chance of rain showers before noon, mostly sunny by Monday afternoon and a high of 64. That is your weather for Zeb at the Rain. Uh, thank you very much. And right now, again, we want to remind you that Mount Harrison Audiology and Hearing Aids, you can trust your hearing health to them. I have been there. They've helped me. They will and can help you. Mount Harrison Audiology and Hearing Aids, 312-0957. You know, this next little story that I'm going to put on, it <laughs> it just shows what kind of an absolute evil society we live in today and how the left, they can say and do anything they want with mild repercussions or even no repercussions. Did you hear about the Fresno State University professor? Professor. That said she was glad that Barbara Bush had died. As a matter of fact, her words were she said she's glad the witch is dead. I I just can't even get it in my head from my left ear to my right ear how anybody could say something so insensitive. As a matter of fact, more of the quote was, Barbara Bush was a generous and smart and amazing racist who, along with her husband, raised a war criminal. I mean, this is completely crazy. But yet this 
professor, and I use that terminology so loosely, how she could be teaching anybody, except maybe a dog to sit up, how in the world she can teach, and how low and despicable can anybody be at the death of another human being? It's just unreal to me how you can come out with statements like this and expect not to have some ramifications or repercussions against you. Uh, it's just like Jerry Brown. They need to know in no uncertain terms that the good people of this country find them to be despicable and lower than fecal material in a feedlot. And I'm not mincing my words. Calls are welcome, 436-2244-1-866-927-4587. Give me a call. Oh, by the way, for those of you that are worrying about the 2020 elections and who may or may not run for the presidency, here's another name to... First I giggled, and then I'm not taking it as such a giggling story, but Eric Holder, yeah, we've talked about him in the past, Eric Holder is evidently on the stump to become the next presidential nominee of the Democratic Party. And in a way, I hope he does. Because that will give me a lot of opportunity to load up and fire at will for his idiocy and his incapabilities of doing anything right. I cannot stand... Eric Holder, and I am waiting for the left, and they will, to come forth and say, like I know they will, you're a racist, you're a bigot, and you're a hate monger. Well, I got broad shoulders. I can take it, because I find Eric Holder and anyone from that Obama administration despicably incapable of doing a job for the entirety of the American public. That kind of sums it up. You can tape that and send it to him if you'd like. 436-2244-1-866-927-4587. Oh, another story, too, that you need to know about. And yesterday we had that gentleman on with the book, excellent book, and I started reading it again early this morning. Uh, Gregory Wrightstone and the book called Inconvenient Facts, the Science that Al Gore Doesn't Want You to Know About. Uh, For those that are bound and determined that we are living in a global warming and climate change state, the month of April, this month, this month, will go down in the history books as the coldest ever April. How does that make you feel? Warm and fuzzy, Al Gore? Caller, I've got about a minute. Real fast. Go ahead, please. Okay. Uh, you totally threw me off Off of when you said Eric Holder is going to run for president. I didn't know that a laugh or cry. Uh, <laughs> uh, the real quick, though, I will just say, when people really sit and think about what he done like with the uh, Fast and Furious gun deal with Mexico and all the other little flub it ups and everything that he did, I think that really helps out the Republican side. Couldn't agree more. But the problem I see is if the Democrats would back somebody like him or Cory Booker or Kamala Harris, holy smokes, that shows you how far into the cesspool the Democrats will go. Uh, it sounds like a clown school to me. <laughs> I like that. Hey, have a great day. I always look forward to you calling. Thank you. Okay, no problem. Bye-bye. All right, sir. Thank you much. Got to run. I got to tell everybody about the great big seven locations of your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers with the big spring tire sale. Yeah, buddy. They've got all the different tires, all the different tread designs for your cars and your pickups, SUVs, horse trailers, boat trailers, whatever. They've got all your tires waiting for you at this big spring tire sale going on right now. The best in brake service, front end alignment, shocks and struts and batteries, all of this and more 
along with the best doggone service to you. They really care. And that's, of course, Lane and Rupert, Dave on Blue Lakes and Twin, Mike and Buell, Mike and Jerome, the Twist family and Paul, Daniel on Poline in Twin Falls, and Randy on Overland in Burley, your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers. We're going to take a little break for about seven minutes, and Wheels is going to have this word for Tommy Alquist on and then take us up to CBS News. We'll be back in a couple of minutes. Oh, thank you very much, and welcome back to hour number two on a Thursday, April 19th already. Zeb at the Ranch, of course, brought to you by our major sponsor, your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers, all seven locations serving you. And, of course, some of our great advertisers, including Burley Physical Therapy and Rehabilitation at 1263 Bennett Avenue, Suite 2 in Burley, helping you get back to being you. Right now, wheels, if you would, this good word for Brad Little. For governor, who can conservatives trust? Not Boise developer Tommy Alquist. Tommy Alquist's tax plan would raise taxes on everything from farm equipment to haircuts. Tommy's given thousands of dollars to liberal Democrat politicians. And Tommy didn't even vote for President Trump against Hillary Clinton. Tommy Alquist is not one of us. And Raul Labrador, he stuck taxpayers with the bill for his luxury SUV and used his campaign cash to pay his wife over $100,000. Raul Labrador's part of the swamp. Idaho needs a trusted conservative. Brad Little is pro-life, pro-marriage, and pro-Second Amendment. And Brad Little believes in lower taxes. It's why Brad Little voted for the largest tax cut in Idaho's history. And as lieutenant governor, Brad Little cut his own budget every year, saving taxpayers money. Brad Little, the conservative we can trust for governor. Paid for by Brad Little for governor. Vicki Rich, treasurer. And thank you very much. Don't forget, Irvana is defined as the ultimate level of comfort you'll achieve with the presence of a new Lennox home comfort system. When you buy a new Lennox system at Ramsey's, you can get up to $1,700 in rebates. Irvana is just another way to make you feel better. So call Ramsey Heating and Electric today at 678-0459 or go online, ramseysonline.com. Really quick, before I go any further, I also want to remind you about our dear friends over at Hanson Mortuary, 710 6th Street in Rupert. Hello, Joel Heward, his family and his staff serving you and your family. They're there. They're always there in a time of need to serve you with the highest ethical standards, with unquestioned integrity. Please remember the number and the name. Hanson Mortuary at 710 6th Street in Rupert. The number to call, 436-5636. And Joel Heward also serving you and your family at Morrison Payne Funeral Home on East Main in Burley. Right now, let's run to the phone line and get our Chamber of Commerce people on the air. Minicasha Chamber of Commerce, good morning. Hi, Seb. Good morning, Mr. Shaley. How are you? I'm really good, Shaley. What is happening over at the Minicasha Chamber of Commerce? Okay, so our biggest news is we hired a new president and CEO. She started Monday, and her name is Sarah Seymour. So if anybody would like to meet Sarah, she'll be at the ribbon cutting this Friday the 20th at United Metals Recycling in Hayburn at 1230 Sharp. Well, so there will be a press release put out about Sarah. Um, she's at the chamber this morning, so if you'd like to stop by and meet her, you're more than welcome to do so. Now, uh, when another thing, mm-hmm. I was going to say, yeah. when will we get a chance, uh, Shaylee, to have her on the program and talk about her being the new director? She, uh, her, and I will actually call in next. Thursday. So okay. If your listeners want to tune in again next Thursday, she will be on the air. Very good. Go ahead. I'm sorry I interrupted you. No problem, Zeb. So another thing that I mentioned, the ribbon cutting United Metals Recycling in Hayburn. Um, it'll be ta- tomorrow, Friday the 20th from 11 to 3 p.m. They'll be doing all sorts of great things down there. Um, they'll be having a barbecue. They'll give away sev- several hundred dollar gift cards. Over 100 free T-shirts. They'll be having raffle prizes. And like I said, the ribbon will be cut at 12.30 p.m. sharp. We hope that you all can join us. It's 1840 Highway 30 in Hayburn. And then the next 
thing that I'm pretty excited to talk about is it's a unique um, event that's coming to our area, and they're looking for volunteers. So if anybody is available for that, you can contact Dave Haruza at 436-4420. And what this is is they are going to put on a event at East Minico called Reality Town. And the high schoolers will come in, and depending on their grade point average, they will draw a card from a certain bucket, and that card will tell them their income, the job they have in the world, and how many children they have to feed, and anything that they're faced with in life, like medical bills, stuff like that. And then there will be a ton of tables set up, so these kids have to go in, And depending on their grade point average, they'll get assigned a job, a house, a life, and then they'll have to go in and figure out their budget and how to live in this reality town. It's pretty great. So there will be, like, banking, medical, property taxes, investment, home improvement, just my luck things, kids, stuff like that. So it's a great learning experience for all the kids. It's May 9th at East Minico. Um, And like I said, if you're interested, they are looking for volunteers. This is a great event. Contact Dave Haruza at 436-4420. And then we also have the Idaho Living, which is our Southern Idaho Women's Expo. Again, that's May 5th, um, 10 to 3, Nature Nursery and Market. There's no entry fee. Bring the whole family down. The food, uh, the parking lot will be filled with food trucks. There will be all sorts of demos going on every 30 minutes. There will be an art contest and several vendors to choose from. Just bring the whole family. It'll be so much fun. And that's Saturday, May 5th. That's the Saturday before Mother's Day. Um, and that's about all I have to talk about this morning, Zeb. Well, I want to say something, Shaylee. I don't know whose idea it was to put together this reality living course, basically. Uh, I think it's long overdue and should be imposed on every school district and every school. I think it's high time that the youth really need to understand the uh, pitfalls and problems that might arise when they become adults. I agree. We watched a uh, demonstration that they had done at a high school in Wyoming, I believe, and it was pretty entertaining, and these kids are a little confused at first, and then when they leave, they really have more of a grasp on reality and why it's so important to attend your classes in high school and get good grades so you have a great shot. Absolutely. So if anyone's interested, again, Dave Caruza, 208 436 Four four two zero. He needs a lot of volunteers to make this happen this first year, and so please contact him. You know what? Have Haruza, Dave Haruza, call me, and maybe I could have a special segment sometime next week. We could talk about that. Would you? Yeah, that would be great. I, he would love that. I'd okay. Let him know. All right. Listen, how many of the nine hundred and seventy-three ways to contact the chamber office are you going to tell us about this morning? Um, so you can stop by our visitor center. It's in Hayburn. Um, Any time between 9 and 5 is when we're open. It's 11777th Street in Hayburn. Or you can call us at 208-679-4793. Jump on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and like our account to stay in the know of what's going on in the mini casual area. Very, I want to compliment you. Very well presented this morning, Shaylee. Thank you so much. Thanks for your time, Zeb. Thanks for having us on. You're very welcome. Minikasha Chamber of Commerce, Shaley. And next week, we're going to be having the interview with the new director, Sarah Seymour, I believe her name is. We'll look forward to it. By the by, we've got a lot of political news to talk about. Kent Searle wants your vote to become District 3 Cache County Commissioner on May 15th. He is a lifelong resident of Cache County, and he says together we can make Cache County even better. Kent Searle for District 3 Cache County Commissioner. Vote May 15th. And, of course, the committee, Dan Gammon, Treasurer. Thank you very much. Also, jumping over to another county, Roger Morley. On May 15th, re-elect Roger Morley, Jerome County Commissioner, District 3. Roger Morley has always said, yes, we can when it comes to being pro-Jerome County. He understands local folks and local problems and wants to continue to work for Jerome County with a pro-jobs 
pro agriculture, pro people attitude. Reelect Roger Morley, District Three, Jerome County Commissioner, on May fifteenth. Paid for by the committee to reelect Roger Morley, Jerome County Commissioner Lorraine Morley, Treasurer. All right. By the way, I've got one other note I want to mention, and I was lax in getting this on the air yesterday. The Declo American Legion Post 144, they are gathering up old cars, farm machinery, uh, old refrigerators, stoves, washers, dryers, or any old metal, any and all metal that uh, they can come and get. They're using it as a fundraiser, so please contact the Declo American Legion, Glenn Wilkinson at 312-6389 or Jim Hartwell at 219-9225. Really great folks over there at the Declo American Legion. And don't forget, on Tuesdays we have a special segment called Vicky's Country Garden. And the lovely Miss Vicky over at 185 South, 600 West of Paul. And we have a program that was virtually a couple of years ago named after me, Gardening for Idiots. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, she hung it on me. I'm not a very good gardener. Anyway, celebrating 21 years in business. Vicky's Country Garden, 185 South, 600 West of Paul. And for all your gardening needs, it's Vicky's Country Garden. Really a nice, nice lady. Let's see. We are at this point going to have a program that I absolutely am, I'm just real proud of because of the excellent people that work over there. And that is the folks at Casher Regional Hospital. Your friends, your neighbors. Let's learn more about it at Casher Regional. People caring about you and your health care in the most professional and progressive ways. That's Casher Regional Hospital, located at 1501 Highland Avenue in Burley. In a moment, we'll introduce you to just one of the many dedicated medical experts serving you at Casher Regional Hospital. Today's program, right after this. Casher Regional Hospital provides you and your family excellent health care answers and services. They're right here, close to home. That's right. Casher Regional Hospital offers the latest technological advances in medicine, like their new oncology programs and telehealth, which uses electronic information and telecommunications to promote long-distant patient and clinical health care. Your friends, your neighbors. Casha Regional Hospital, 1501 Highland Avenue in Burley. Quality care, close to home. Well, today we have a chance to visit with a lady that is the communications manager of Casha Regional Hospital, and I say a great day to Stephanie Curtis. How are you? I'm well, Bob. It's great to talk to you today. You know, it's been such a real treat for me and my wife to be able to visit with you about all the other people at Casha Regional that are the heads of various departments. But as the communications manager, what does that mean? What do you have to do every day at your office? Well, I'm responsible for marketing, and so that means the billboards you see and the radio programs and things like that. Make sure we get the word out on uh, what we're doing here that's great and wonderful and coming up next at Casha Regional. Um, and then I, I also deal with media relations, community health, um, and PR. Okay. Now, there's so many great people over there, and I've learned a lot talking to the various department heads, etc. But now you've got some special events along with great people, but you've got special events coming up. Tell us about what's in the future at Casha Regional. You bet. So just here in a couple of weeks, so starting April 23rd and going through April 28th, so that's a Monday through Saturday, we have our annual blood draw health fair. So we do blood screenings. Um, we, we have the same prices we've had for years, a $50 wellness screening profile, which includes chemistry, thyroid, lipid, and complete blood count a $15 hemoglobin A1C test for diagnosis of and monitoring for diabetes, and a $25 prostate-specific antigen for males over 50. 
All right, now, on this blood draw, why is this important? I mean, tell people so that they become aware and maybe even a little shocked as to why they should be participating in this event. Well, so a lot of people do this annually and even semi-annually to, to just um, understand what their body is doing on the inside. You know, the things that we don't know are going on, and these tests that give you kind of an insight, and doctors like to... Uh, view these tests to kind of take what you might call a thermometer, you know. They, it, it, just, it just gives them a little peek inside to see how things are going and then to see if they need to do any follow-up, if any of the exams are outside of the normal range. Um, if any of the screenings, I'm sorry, are outside of the normal range, then uh, you would be called back and encouraged or encouraged to see your, make an appointment with your primary care physician to follow up and get you right back to being 100% healthy again. You know, it sounds to me like it's a really good precautionary method for people to be aware of what's going on with their health. If there's a problem, let's go right to the bottom line. They should know about it so they can address it and hopefully help it and cure it, correct? That's right. Yep. This is this is really uh, a prevention uh, technique in 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 you taking good care of yourself. Um, so this this just this just helps you stay on the wellness spectrum of of health. So it's a it's a great idea to do these. Okay. Now give us the parameters again. Uh, the times, the location, everything, so people can put that on their calendar. You bet. It runs from April 23rd to April 28th, which is a Monday through Saturday, and it opens at 7 a.m., and then we run till 10 a.m., and it is at Cash Regional Hospital, so we just invite you to come right in the front lobby, and there will be people there to greet you and help you through the process. You'll just fill out some paperwork and uh, make your payment, and then they take you right in. It shouldn't take very long. Um, and just a reminder to everyone, because in years past we've done it two weeks, but we think we can do it in one week this year. So it is just one week, April 23rd through the April 28th. Okay, now what about fasting? Uh, they shouldn't have breakfast, should they? Thank you for asking that. I should have mentioned that. Right. So we recommend 12 hours of fasting, but nine hours is, is acceptable. Water is okay. And... Um, so you can drink something in the morning. Okay. And a provider, and we also want you to know that a provider will be available at our big event. So for uh, those people in the community who come to our big event every year, um, they'll know all about this. But on Friday, May 4th, we have our big event where we have a safety fair, health screenings, and educational booths. We, uh, it's our health fair, annual health fair. Um, and there is always a provider there who will sit down with you personally, one-on-one, -on -one, and pull up your screening results if you haven't received them in time for the health fair. And they will go through them with you, and you can ask them questions about your results so that you can gain a better understanding. Sometimes it seems like Greek if you're not clinical, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and they can, so they'll go with you and consult, and that's just a free service that we provide at the health fair. And the health fair, um, the big event is Friday, May 4th from 3 to 6 p.m., and that is also at Castro Regional Hospital, and it's spread all out through the hospital, but probably the best place to start is at our front lobby again. Now, let me ask you this when you say health fair. I mean, uh, initially people might have the uh, image in their mind of carnival rides and bright lights and everything. What takes place at these health fairs, and how is it all set up? Okay, so the health fair is this um, great big event where we have all sorts of, well, our departments and our clinics set up booths and tables, but we also bring in a lot of outside uh, government agencies and other um, health agencies, and it's all nonprofit, so there are no vendors. They're not going to be sold anything. Uh, this is all about getting education to our community to help everybody live the healthiest life possible. Um, so there are just a lot of really fun things. We, we really try to cater the information and the booth to all ages. So uh, bring your children. There are lots of fun things for them to interact with and learn about. 
And we always have lots of giveaways and prizes. Um, in, in fact, we give away a few really big prizes like a Fitbit and bicycles and things like that just to kind of get people to come through the door and, and visit, um, visit our booth and have fun with us and learn about taking great care of their health. You know, Stephanie, when I think about this, are you going to have, like, different departments and different health care issues represented? Like, maybe somebody's going through the trauma of cancer, maybe somebody's going through the trauma of uh, multiple sclerosis, whatever the case might be. Are you going to have different activities and uh, venues of information on those diseases that might be pertinent to them? Yes, pretty much every single one of our departments and service lines and clinics will be present there. And so they have chosen a topic to educate on. But if you had a specific issue like scoliosis, uh, your uh, team of specialists would be right there to uh, answer your questions or, or at least to take your question and follow up with you. So it's a great, great chance to uh, meet with those people and get questions answered. Um, but, for example, we will have things like, well, Head Start, that's one of our partner agencies, will be here doing screenings for children, um, hearing and vision screenings. We have our physical therapy departments doing something really neat. They are doing a developmental screening for three- to six-year-olds. Mm. So they will do some screenings with those age groups and uh, let you know where your child's at in, the, in their development to let you know if, if they're on track and how they're doing. Um, we have pharmacies going to talk about poison control and um, imaging every year does a really fun thing. They, they have a goldfish and they, <laughs> they do an x-ray of the goldfish while you're standing there so you get to kind of see it up on the uh -huh. screen and then they'll print out a picture for, you know, your children to take home with them of the goldfish and its bones. Oh so, my goodness. I mean, and there are so many more things like that. I mean, it's just full of really fun, really interesting things. And we have a safety fair out back. So um, most of the booths are in the front lobby and then down towards our medical office building. And then we've got a whole lot going on in our back by our ED and our emergency department in our cafeteria. Um, it's the safety fair. And so they bring in the forest service and the fire department and the police department and um, the canal company, and they're, they're going to bring in a tractor and talk about tractor safety and uh, spot the tot and fishing game are going to be there talking about gun safety. And then we have safe kids, um, so they're going to talk about bike safety and make sure you have helmets and car seats that are working properly and installed properly. Wow. So, yeah. So those are, <laughs> and I'm sorry if I went through that so quickly, but there's a lot going on, and, and it's really fun. Um, we also have a teddy bear clinic, which is really fun for younger children if they'll bring their own uh, stuffed animal from home. Uh, they'll do a little teddy bear clinic, and it kind of helps those children uh, be more interested in, in maybe going to the doctor and a little less scared of that process. Let me ask you this. I'm almost out of time, but uh, what are the dates and the starting times of this event? Okay, the big event is Friday, May 4th, and it's from 3 to 6 p.m. And like I said, it's throughout our hospital, but if you'll come through the front lobby first, that's probably the best place to start. All right. And uh, also, uh, will there be uh, a number that they could call to make sure that uh, everything is uh, open and operating? I mean, is there an information number for this event? If people are interested in or have questions about it, they can call me. Uh, my phone number at my desk is 208-677-6400. A wonderful lady representing Cashier Regional Hospital, and she is the communications manager, Stephanie Curtis, all for you and taking care of your better health at Cashier Regional Hospital. Thank you, Stephanie. Thanks, Deb. Tune in every Thursday at 918 right here on Zebit the Ranch for more about the people and the health care services at your Cashier Regional Hospital, 1501 Highland Avenue in Burley. Quality care, close to home. 
right. Oh, uh, thank you very much. And right now, don't forget, when you get somebody that does the job for you, you don't want to lose them. As a matter of fact, you reelect him. And that's what we're talking about with Fred Wood. Reelect Fred Wood, District 27 representative on May 15th. Integrity serving you. Paid for by the committee to reelect Fred Wood. Steve Westfall, Treasurer. Right now, I'm a little bit late, and I can just hear Rita going, Are you going to get me on the air? Just a moment, Rita. I'll be right there. Don't forget Lee's Furniture, Floors, and more. And they're located at 459 Overland in Burley. They've got everything to spruce up for springtime. All the furniture, the Lazy Boy, uh, all the kinds of recliners that you're looking for. They've got them all right there with the furniture for your kitchen, your dinette sets, your living room furniture, everything at Lee's Furniture Floors and more. 459 Overland in Burley and all the carpeting and luxury vinyl planks. What a selection at Lee's Furniture, Floors, and More. With Jeff and the whole crew, spruce up for springtime. Lee's Furniture, Floors, and More. One more quick word, and I want to remind you about our friends over at Let's Ride, 270 Highway 24 between Rupert and the World. They are open Monday through Friday, 9 to 6, Saturdays 9 to 4, with the best of all the fun for getting outside and enjoying Idaho. All the four-wheelers and all the side-by-sides, everything for you, and all the accessories to go with it, and to keep you running the best doggone service department around. All of this at Let's Ride, 270 Highway 24, between Rupert and the World, number to call, 436-4771. Let's Ride, where the fun is sold. Whoa, I know she's probably chomping on the bit. Good morning, Rita Ramsey. How are you? Good morning. I'm good. Thank you. Rita, I'm going to start. I've got a whole bunch of things to mention to you this morning. We're going to kind of shotgun this a little bit. What, first of all, were your thoughts, and I know you follow the news as good or as uh, well as anybody. You really are up uh, on your education. What did you think about this mess with this New Yorker magazine writer that wrote a story against Chick-fil-A uh, restaurants and condemned Christianity? What did you think about that? Well, I think this is just another attack on, on people who want to, to be religious. You know, you don't find the Christians writing articles about newspaper people who are idiots and who don't <laughs> have a faith and who, you know, just discoriate other people. The Christians just go about their business and do their thing and, and make the world better. And it's just, it's just despicable that, they would do, that he would do something like that. And that he would get any kind of a, a hand, you know, hands up for who wants it to go into print. I mean, that is just ridiculous that they would even consider letting something that go in. But they're just so, so intent on on dragging down Christians. You know, they did the same thing with old Tim Tebow and and various other things. You know, it's just we're just going to attack them. That's all there is to it. Absolutely. I might add that we are in the process, thanks to my lovely bride helping me with some of the uh, phone numbers and everything, we're trying to get to uh, many of the people at the headquarters office for Chick-fil-A, and we're going to have them hopefully on our program this next week so they can have what I think would be a fair assessment of what the problem is, and so we're going to try to get them on the program. Now, the next category that I want you to talk about, and I had to curb my language a little bit when I was talking about him earlier this morning, because I find him to be more one of the most despicable human beings in the United States, because he's blatantly breaking the law and doesn't care about citizens of this country. And you know who I'm referring to, Governor Jerry Brown. Your thoughts? Yeah, Mr. Moonbeam, but before we go with this, I want to add, add, add something to the Chick-fil-A thing. Remember when Chick-fil-A took those, literally, I think there were about 5,000 meals over to the Atlanta airport when yes. they were shut down with power on yes. Sunday, when Chick-fil-A wasn't open, they were serving others. That story did not go across the country like, man, look at the good they do. And Absolutely. So when they do something good, it's ignored. And if anything else happens or they want to, all of a sudden it's just an attack. 
I am so glad you brought that up, and I, I salute you for saying that, because that's even another great point that needs to be mentioned, and I'm going to write that down and uh, remember that when I get them on the air. Now, to one of our least favorite people, Jerry Brown. Well, Mr. Moonbeam, uh, one of the first things that we probably ought to highlight is that I think it was yesterday or the day before, the eight most polluted cities in the nation were announced, and what was it, six out of the eight of them mm -hmm. were in California. Mm -hmm. So this goes to prove that all of the crap that California has done and all of the limitations that they have put on business and everybody else has not changed and made their cities cleaner and better. And if you hear people who are in California and especially over on the coast, San Francisco people are just up in arms to no extent because of the problems that they've got. The city is just totally falling apart, and a lot of that has to do with their city leadership, of course. But the homelessness and all of that kind of stuff is just getting worse and worse and worse, and they're not caring whether they bring in illegals and have all these sanctuary cities. Moonbeam needs to have his butt kicked right out of town and out of the country, as far as I'm concerned. Send him to Mexico. He likes them so well. Well, and let's look at some of the facts that are going on down there. You mentioned all the communities that are going in arbitration against his edicts as governor, and they're going to side with the Trump administration on not having sanctuary cities and or a sanctuary state. And when you get the population, I believe San Diego is the second largest populated city in California, they said, no, Jerry Brown, we're not going to go along with you. Do you think the guy's going to get the memo? Well, you would think, and you would also think that the legislators would say, um, we're going to have a mob on our hands if we don't go in and start doing something and be lawful about this. That also was one thing that I wanted to mention. There was a, uh, a deal in Florida where a, a dealership for motorcycles was written up for yes. having flags out there. And all it took was for one person to start on Facebook and on social media, and this was on Monday that the, that the uh, citation was written up. Right. By Wednesday, they had 9.5 million people that had read that and found that and started protesting. And all of a sudden, the city was backtracking and going, Holy cow, you know, whoa, whoa, whoa. And, and, and this is what happens if people will, will express their opinions and be heard by just over and over and over again and pushing it, putting it on social media, announcing it wherever they're at and talking about it. Some of these politicians will get the message that, hey, uh, we might be going the wrong direction, and if we don't watch out, there's going to be a bunch of people on the steps of this building with pitchforks, and how are we going to leave? Well, we covered that story Monday. As a matter of fact, the superintendent uh, that had decided to write up a citation for this business, Melinda Powers, oh, by the way, she's been put on administrative leave, and I don't think Melinda's going to come back with her job capacity as she used to know it. She is not very well thought of. The mayor of Jacksonville even had to apologize. So you're 100% right that the populace said, back off. Well, and this is what needs to happen in California, and I think they're getting the picture of this, because all, of it, all it took was one little small berg, if you will, to say, no, we're not going to do it. And other people decided to jump on and get with it and say, that's the way that we feel, too. We love our state, we love our, our climate, we love the people here, but there's just some of them who have hijacked us and we just can't stand for it anymore. By doing that, they'll end up having a lot of other communities get on board with them because everybody who is opposed to it, and, and I think it's probably the majority, will say no, and maybe they will get something done and have to backtrack on it. It was amazing that um, Governor Brown decided that he would go ahead and send 400 National Guard to the border to help uh, with the control of uh, immigrants coming in that aren't supposed to be here. Yeah, but wait a minute, wait a minute, there's a caveat. They can't do anything. 
They are not allowed to even fuel up a truck that might be used to pick up and or curtail an illegal alien. So what good is the expense of putting the guard on the border on behalf of Brown State, California, when they, with the stipulations that Brown has issued, can't do anything? Well, I think, and, I, and I, I read this about the ones in some of the other states as well, is that they aren't really going to be doing the arresting, but, you know, their presence with their, with their uniforms and showing that they're there and that they, they can, you know, enforce the, the uh, Border Patrol people, I think will make a lot of difference. It, it doesn't seem right that they should not be able to apprehend and hold them and that kind of stuff. It's kind of like sending everybody to Vietnam and saying, by the way, you can't use your gun. Right, but, right. Which is what's happened in a number of wars that we've had over the last 50 years. But nevertheless, their presence there, and if, if the National Guard and they could get their foot in the door as far as maybe helping prevent some of this illegal uh, activity coming across the border... I think is a step forward. I do too. But now I said first hour, I don't know if you heard me or not, but I said first hour that I personally am going to get the address and whether it be a mailing address or an email address of Governor Jerry Brown, and I am going to send him a letter about how despicable I think he and his policies are because there will be, and you know this is true, there will be a lot of spillover of what's happening in California go to other states, and I think we all should tell Jerry Brown, back off, you're in the wrong. What are your thoughts? Well, I think so, and, and one of the most uh, effective ways is to actually call and jam their lines. The other one is is to write a letter and put it in the mail rather right. than email because right. you never have to open your email, right. and they can't even begin to see the amount unless they open it up and say, yeah, let's look at it. But if they have the... Um, you know, the foresight to know that it's coming in, it'll be okay, we just aren't going to open any of it. But they have, to, they have to have those envelopes dropped into their mailboxes, and if the phone lines are jammed up, it makes a lot of difference. So I would encourage anyone to get that information and get them notified, um, saying that, hey, you know, California, we may not live in California, but they're part of this United States of America, and California is a good place to start with some of this. Absolutely. I appreciate that. Uh, did you hear the news that one of the possible Democratic nominees for the presidency may be one of the people I just absolutely have no time for, and that's Eric Holder? What are your thoughts? Well, I don't think that will go very far. I think Eric Holder saw his... Uh, his day in the in the administration, and it's it's time for him to be gone. Um, along that line, um, I don't know whether you read this or not. It was a story that came out. Actually, it was this morning, and um, it was a story about uh, a uh, national secu- national security stratus for former Trump administration official, Dr. Sebastian Gor- Gorka. Mm-hmm. He was writing a letter and talking, or writing an article, and he talked about how he went to a place and he was giving a, a message. And one of the things that he was talking about is there's so much hate and stuff out there. And, and he says, yeah, that's true. But he says, let me give you a little example. He said, I went into a, um, a grocery store the first few days after the election. And he says, while in the checkout line, a lady um, kind of was investigating to confirm to herself who he was, and she leaned over to tell him in a thick accent, but at a whisper, we won. And he replied, no, 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 it's not we won, it's America won. And then somebody else heard the utterance and launched into a big uh, tirade yelling at him and everything else, and and um, she said, no, it's your effing bigot of a candidate is going to run, ruin this country. And he said it's the first time he'd experienced such a thing. And he replied to her, madam, that attitude is why your candidate lost. And so I think this is going to be a, a forerun of what's going to happen with the Democrats. They are so rabid that they'll just put anybody out there that they can, and they will just keep being so mean and so mad that I don't see how they gain much uh, 
attraction with any candidate they would put out. You might laugh at this and give me a short answer because I've got to go to the weather, but do you know the candidate that really I'm afraid of the most if she does become the nominee? Do you know who that is? Well, there's actually two women. One of them is old. What's her name, the Indian lady, and the other one is that Harris? Camilla Harris. There you go. That is the one that, honestly, I'm more afraid of than anyone because she is extremely far left. She is extremely an advocate of Black Lives Matter. I'm telling you something, Rita. Watch out for her. Watch out for her. Well, I think that she may be one of the top contenders. However, her, her recognition and her name doesn't stand out like a lot of other people and so it might be a little bit difficult but they'll do whatever they can the democrats to see if they can you know push forward but they are so rabid right now that it's going to be tough for anybody to get through the hate i agree stand by rita ramsey and we'll be right back but wheels first of all can we have this good word for representative fred wood Integrity serving you. Re-elect District 27 Representative Fred Wood on May 15th. Fred has protected the economic value of Idaho's water. Fred has worked diligently to increase education funding and higher teacher salaries. Fred has stood firm for tax cuts and low taxes with a small, efficient government. Re-elect Fred Wood. District 27 on May 15th. It's true. Integrity serving you. Paid for by the committee to re-elect Fred Wood, Steve Westfall, Treasurer. Right now, let's go to the weather and the weather brought to you by Phillips Oaks, Goodwin, Crane, and Company. And they've been providing accounting services to you, your family, and your businesses in the Minicasha area for well over 50 years. They are the best. That's not brag. That is a fact. Tax return preparation, tax planning, business consulting, bookkeeping services, the list goes on. And they have offices in Burley and Rupert. Work with the best to help you. Phillips Oaks, Goodwin, Crane, and Company. And right now, here's Gina with the weather. The days are getting warmer and calmer as we make our way towards the weekend. Here's your forecast for Zephyr Ranch. We are expecting partly sunny skies today with a high of 62. Winds out of the east-northeast right around 12 miles an hour, gusts as high as 23 miles an hour. For tonight, partly cloudy skies, still a little on the breezy side, but we are expecting a low of 39. For tomorrow, sunny skies with a high of 64. Tomorrow night, clear with a low of 40. For Saturday, even better. Sunny skies, high near 66, still a little on the breezy side. For Saturday night, clear and 40. For Sunday, we do have a 20% chance of... Uh, Thunderstorms in the forecast, mostly in the afternoon. Other than that, sunny skies with a high of almost 70 for Monday. That could continue with a chance of rain showers before noon, mostly sunny by Monday afternoon and a high of 64. That is your weather for Zeb at the Ranch. Thank you very much. And the weather brought to you by our friends that just absolutely can help you, your family, and your business with the best of accounting services. Phillips, Oaks, Goodwin, Crane, and Company with offices in Burley and Rupert. Rita, this last hour, I talked about that story that uh, unfortunately is becoming prominent in the news about how many across the world are trying to introduce legislation that would kill and allow the killing of babies that have been predetermined before birth to possibly have Down syndrome. I say that we are on the tipping point of evil worldwide. What are your thoughts about this heinous story? Oh, absolutely. The thing of it is, is this started a long time ago, and there were abortions approved in many countries besides the United States, but when we made it so that it's like, it's easy to get it, and the government will pay for it, and everything else, and it just has blossomed into millions and millions of babies over the years being killed, when we do that, we lose our, our respect for life, and it doesn't matter. And then next comes the, the deal with the, the Down syndrome or, or children who are, who are badly, um, you know, have, have issues, and that we should just get rid of them so that we don't have to worry about it. That's not what the, when you, how you show respect for life, and it will just dwindle, as was mentioned in your last hour. Um, they will start after they do the Down syndrome thing in these countries, many of them already do, is that anybody who has other types of frailties, 
they're a cost or a drain on the society, so we should get rid of them as well. I heard somebody say, um, no, I can't even remember who it was, but it's been probably a number of months ago. Um, we were having a discussion, and he said that uh, they'd had a, um, I don't think it was, it might have been a foreign exchange student, but I think it was just some people visiting from, oh, Norway or someplace like that, and, and they, they said, Karen, I've seen a number of people with um, uh, wheelchairs and, you know, carrying oxygen and, and crutches and that type of thing around here. He says, you never see those kind of people in our countries. And, and he kind of looked at them like, well, where are they? Certainly they aren't just in America. And they explained that they don't let those type of people live when they have that type of stuff because it's a drain on societies. So I think a lot of the societies in in other countries, mainly Europe most likely, they have and communist countries of course, they have already started doing that and they do it and it doesn't matter one bit. It is also mentioned by Chris, I think we're getting a lot further away from God when we decide that we're going to take matters into our own hands. Absolutely. Uh let me say this that uh I brought up the Harrisburg, Pennsylvania talking about introducing a bill and fortunately it was voted down but there were the vote was 139 to 56 to absolutely throw this kind of thinking out of that uh, legislature in Pennsylvania but here's the thing i mentioned this on the air first hour there were 56 people that wanted to have that bill to allow abortions to kill these babies. 56! Rita, that ought to be just absolutely shockingly and scaringly make people look at their Bible and go, Good Lord, what is happening to us? Well, not only should they do that, they should be getting an, a, a big group together and going to protest their legislators for doing something like this yeah it was it was good that they turned down and didn't pass it but how many people are paying attention to what's happening in the legislature and when they do something like this those who voted against letting that pass that was good but those who wanted it to pass they need to be heard from by their constituents and say we are not going to put up with anything like this you have got to be out of your ever living mind What scares me is the lack of respect for life. I've seen it, I've heard it, I've witnessed it, and uh, a person like myself on crutches, which I make no bones about it, I'm proud of what I am and who I am, but someone that has a sight problem, someone that has any other kind of infrailty, uh, they're just going to be pushed off a cliff or given a medicine or told to go die? I mean, this is such an insensitive world that we're living in. What happened to the value of life? Well, it, it comes when people don't want to, to be good, when they don't want to stay close to God. Chris mentioned this again. You know, Sundays used to be going to church. People quit going to church, and it's like, well, it's more fun to go to the mountains or go fishing or whatever, and they take their kids, and their kids don't get any association with church, and and consequently, they're not talking about the Ten Commandments and the Golden Rule at home, and and um, we just get further and further away from it. We have a responsibility as as parents to teach our children and our grandchildren and be good examples. We need to be showing up at church and taking them with us and letting them know that you do this because you respect God and you want to stay close to God. Absolutely. Rita, I don't know where the time went, but it went, and it's over. I've got to say thank you to you today and look forward to next Thursday. Thank you so much. You bet. We'll see you. Goodbye. God bless. Rita Ramsey on our program. Always a lady that's very well informed with what's going on in the news. Don't forget when you think about life insurance, health insurance, retirement planning, and employee benefits. Yep, yep, yep. you got to think about our friends Cameron and Siemens Insurance Highway 24 in Rupert. Number to call, 436-4424. That number again, 436-4424. They are very responsive and dedicated to serving you, Cameron and and Siemens Insurance, Highway 24 in Rupert. You call them today.
By the way, Lori Likely is running for election in the Idaho House, seat 25A. Lori is part of a fourth-generation ranching family and, believe me, focused on economic vitality and vibrant small business. And she has been involved. She was appointed by Governor Otter to the Beef Council from 2005 to 2011. Lori Likely for Idaho House, seat 25A, paid for by the committee to elect Lori Likely, Bill Likely, treasurer. Well, guess what we're going to do right now? We're going to talk about food, and I guarantee I know some really good places to go if you're hungry and starving to death. We'll go through these right now. How about the AC Drive-In at 601 East Main in Burley? Oh, shrimp and small fry, just $7. Famous Farmer Brown Burgers, fries, and all the different flavored shakes. It's great at AC Drive-In, 601 East Main in Burley. Mmm, great. And how about this one, Taco Bandito, 2301 Overland in Burley, one of the best doggone places to go for coffee in the morning. All your friends are there, and they have those breakfast burritos, scrambled eggs, bacon sauces, cheese, onions, tomato sauce, all on a tortilla shell. Fantabulous. The great menu at Taco Bandito, 2301 Overland in Burley. Burgers, etc. Two locations, 124 South Oneida in Rupert and 700 Overland in Burley. Oh, have you tried that mushroom burger combo? Only five ninety nine after 3 p.m. in the afternoon. And every Sunday at the Burley location, shrimp dinner, only five ninety nine. Great food. Nice people. Burgers, etc. in Rupert and Burley. And last but not least, our friends at Stevo's, where food is made the way you love it, at 290 South, 600 West of Hayburn. On Friday, April 20th, they're going to be celebrating their 23rd year anniversary. Congratulations and really good food. You've got to try all the different salads and the sandwiches, everything fantastic. And it's going to be a great big 23rd anniversary party at Stevo's this weekend, 290 South, 600 West of Hayburn. And those are just a few great places to go if you're hungry and starving to death. And right now, without any other uh, words, we're going to listen to this for Tommy Alquist, and then Wheels is going to take us up to the CBS News. Ah, good morning. Welcome back to our number three. Zeb at the Ranch on a Thursday, April 19th. And, of course, we're brought to you by our major sponsor, your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers. All seven locations serving you with a big spring tire sale. And, of course, some of our great advertisers like Burley Physical Therapy and Rehabilitation at 1263 Bennett Avenue, Suite 2 in Burley, helping you get back to being you. Right now, we could we have this word for Brad Little? For governor, who can conservatives trust? Not Boise developer Tommy Alquist. Tommy Alquist's tax plan would raise taxes on everything from farm equipment to haircuts. Tommy's given thousands of dollars to liberal Democrat politicians. And Tommy didn't even vote for President Trump against Hillary Clinton. Tommy Alquist is not one of us. And Raul Labrador, he stuck taxpayers with the bill for his luxury SUV and used his campaign cash to pay his wife over $100,000. Raul Labrador's part of the swamp. Idaho needs a trusted conservative. Brad Little is pro-life, pro-marriage, and pro-Second Amendment. And Brad Little believes in lower taxes. It's why Brad Little voted for the largest tax cut in Idaho's history. And as lieutenant governor, Brad Little cut his own budget every year, saving taxpayers money. Brad Little, the conservative we can trust for governor. Paid for by Brad Little for governor. Vicki Rich, treasurer. And don't forget, Ervana, defined as the ultimate level of comfort you'll achieve. And that's with the presence of a new Lennox Home Comfort System. When you buy a new Lennox Home Comfort System at Ramsey Heating and Electric, you can get up to $1,700 in rebates. Mm, another way to make you feel better, Ervana. So call Ramsey Heating and Electric today at 678-0459 or go to the website ramseysonline.com.
And by the way, too, don't forget, Kent Searle wants your vote to become District 3 Cache County Commissioner on May 15th. Kent Searle, lifelong resident of Cache County, has the experience of being a farmer and a service to you as an EMT and first responder, and he's gained your trust, serving on the Ag Advisory Committee and the Gateway Power Line Committee. Kent Searle says together we can make Cache County even better. Kent Searle for District 3 Cache County Commissioner, vote May 15th, Dan Gammon, Treasurer. Well, I tell you, at this time of day, we uh, get all set to go on a Thursday with our next segment, which is Cache County School Days. And we're very honored to have two great sponsors. First of all, A Child's World at 1308 Overland and Burley. Oh, my goodness, all the spring clothes are there. And they've got a great selection of all the baby clothing and uh, different gifts for birthday presents, games and puzzles and toys, all there at a family. Family store, a child's world. 1308 Overland in Burley. Along with Ambulatory Surgery Center at 1344 Highland in Burley. Number to call for more information on how they can save you money on your outpatient surgeries like life saving colonoscopies. You call them today, 677 8888. 677 8888. Ambulatory Surgery Center, along with a child's world, bringing you school days. In Cache County. And our guest for this morning on Cache County School Days is the principal at John Evans Elementary. Good morning, Dustin Heath. How are you? Good morning. How are you doing? Good. I need you to speak up nice and loud and directly into the telephone. And I understand you've got a brand new program that. Pardon me? Can you hear me now? I can hear you. Just speak up nice and loud, and if it's on a speakerphone or anything like that, I don't want that on the program. You've got a new policy over at the school, or a new program, I should say, to increase support with positive behavior. What's going on over there at John M. Evans Elementary? Well, I'm going to have to correct you on one thing. We're still considered Mountain View Elementary, even though we are living at John Evans, uh, as Mountain View is being remodeled, so... That's what they've told me all year. We call ourselves Mountain View still, but we we call ourselves Mountain Mountain V Evans is what we kind of sometimes call ourselves. In fact, um, but uh, we we've been doing this uh, positive behavior support program for the last uh, year and a half or so. Received some pretty explicit training on what things we can do to help out our students, um, and we've. We've been uh, working in conjunction with Burley Junior High, who uh, has, is about a year ahead of us on the positive behavior support framework. Um, and uh, throughout the school, we have three main principles that we live by. We stole these from Burley Junior High. Every time we see a, a good idea, we, we're we sure to steal it from someone. So uh, the three principles are being safe, being respectful, being responsible. And uh, we, can, we can outline any positive behavior, uh, anything that we need to see uh, improved at our school under one of those three pieces uh, at our school. So what we decided to do, because we wanted to make sure the kids were remembering and, and thinking, and we also wanted to see that teachers were uh, encouraging this behavior, we put together some, uh, we ordered some wooden nickels online and uh, we put those three principles, be safe, be respectful, and be responsible, on the outside of the wooden nickels. And, uh, and so whenever a teacher sees a student who's exhibiting uh, behavior that might be safe or respectful or responsible, um, they'll give them a, one of these wooden nickels. And this could be you know, come, given from me or from a secretary or from a paraprofessional. Or, and it doesn't have to be a student that's in your room. It's just any time you see this. Uh, then they get the they get the wooden nickel, and then they take that nickel back to their uh, teacher. And the teacher puts it in a jar in their classroom, and then they take it from the jar about once a week, and then they fill a school bucket uh, that we keep in the library so all the kids can see it filling up. And then once that bucket is full, then we have a school wide party, a, a positive behavior party that celebrates all the great things that are happening at the school. The thing I love about this is that. It flips the switch a little bit. I think we get so stuck occasionally as teachers in watching for all the bad behaviors 
that we just start focusing on that all the time. And when we use these wooden nickels, it makes it forces us as teachers and as, as all staff members to start focusing on the positive behaviors that are happening at the school. And, and um, when you focus on the positive, it really just breeds more positive behavior. So we found it to be a really successful program, and we're actually going to be earning. We just barely filled the bucket again, so we're going to be earning a party uh, again as a school um, coming up within the next week, and we're pretty excited about that. Well, you know, let's break this down a little bit. You said uh, safe, respectful, and responsible. Go ahead and break it down. What do you mean by seeing something safe? What, what, how are they going to walk up to a student and say, hey, I just saw you do that, and I thought that was very well done? Uh, explain some of these categories. Sure. So um, so we have uh, our, our three you know, principles, which are the safe, respectful, responsible, but then we have six areas of the school in which we can exhibit these behaviors. We have the classroom, the playground, the cafeteria, the hallway, the restroom, and then outside when we're doing bus and bus and pick up and drop off with the kids. So if I could give you an example of... Uh, we review every, every day in our announcements, we review a new principle. Um, so if we want to talk about being safe on the playground, we always, use, uh, we always use keep your hands and feet to yourself for every one of our areas. We try and keep our hands and feet to ourselves. That's one way we stay safe. Um, also, we use our, the equipment properly. We have rules set up for, you know, climbing up the slide while someone's going down the slide is not safe. And so if we use the equipment properly, that helps us. Um, we always be sure that the kids will tell the teacher in the orange vest about safety problems. And then a big one here at the lower elementary especially is we leave the snow and the dirt and the rocks on the ground. As soon as those start getting picked up or kicked up in the air, then people get them in their faces and their eyes, and we end up with uh, a lot more Band-Aids having to be given out of the office when kids are not doing uh, or when kids are picking that stuff up off the ground. Um, and so... Uh, so within those categories, we just have them all outlined what specific things um, we want to see. And, you know, in addition, we try and keep the language positive, too. So rather than saying no throwing rocks, we say leave the rocks on the ground um, because we want it to be, a, you know, a positive language for the kids to understand this is what you do rather than what you don't do. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you this, Dustin, and uh, there's been a lot of stories lately about letting kids be kids. In some of the schools, yep. they had policies of going outside. Now, you stand over there, Johnny. Enjoy the fresh air, but don't move. Don't run. Don't do anything. Just stand there. You can't do that to kids at a recess. I mean, kids have got to be kids. they got to burn off some of that energy. Absolutely. You know, one thing we have at our building right now which I almost kind of wish we'd just keep is uh, because as our, as our playground is getting added to bit by bit, we have one area that's kind of a, just a big gravel pit um, that's eventually going to be a uh, play structure. But um, so we, asked, we were talking about it at the beginning of the year, well, should we let the kids play there, should we not? And I said, absolutely, let's let the kids play there. So we bought, we bought shovels and buckets and, and uh just those kids would just go down there and just dig and, and have a, a blast. And it, you know, we don't mind them getting a little dirty. We don't want them to get mud everywhere, but we don't mind them getting, you know, getting in the gravel and just and just playing with it and dumping things out and, you know, having a good time. We want them to be able to move. We want them to be able to uh, have that fun within within the guidelines of, you know, let's still be safe, let's still be responsible, let's still be respectful of other of other space. You know, kids, uh, I've got about two minutes left here, but uh, kids, if given the opportunity, could be the world's greatest construction company. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> what about, uh, real quick, hit us on respectful and responsible. Please sure and mention that, if you would. Sure. Um, so if we wanted to talk playground, continue to talk playground, uh, we put under playground to be respectful in the playground. We use kind words with others. Um, be sure to include other kids, and we, we make that clear. Not everybody has to be your best friend, but if you're playing a game, just you know, let them play. And then uh, be sure to take turns, wait in line. We have like a tetherball pole. We, you know, kids all want to swarm around, and so we have them wait in line. And then to be responsible on the playground, we ask them to show good sportsmanship. Um, and then we tell them, 
follow the tattle rules. Tattling is, especially at this grade level, tattling is such a hard thing for teachers to navigate because you're not sure whether or not this is a real problem or just they're just trying to get someone in trouble. So the two things we ask the kids to follow is is dis- determine, is this a dangerous, is it something that's dangerous or unsafe, and does it involve you? And if you, if you answer, if you're answering no to both, if it's not dangerous, it doesn't involve you, you probably don't need to talk to the teacher about it. There you go. I like that. Yeah. Well, you know, it sounds to me like you've got some really innovative ideas going on to increase uh, positive behavior. And all of this that you're doing, I think, is going to trickle back home and maybe have an influence on the parents, too. Yeah. In fact, we sent home this whole behavior matrix with all these things to the parents so that they can see what we're expecting at school. And I've had some parents come back to me and say, you know, we created something kind of like that for our home because it, it outlines things and it just sets a precedent. It doesn't have to be exact, specific uh, rules. It's just guidelines of what we expect. And so I think it's a wonderful thing for the home. Well, I guarantee you, I think a lot of what you've talked about this morning, I respect what you're talking about because it uh, creates safety and more responsibility. Uh, Dustin Heath, principal at, and if I say it wrong, Mountain View, right? Yes. Okay, I was given uh, John Evans Elementary, so I apologize. No, that's fine. Mountain View living at John Evans is what we were saying. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) Titles, titles, titles. Thank you very much, Dustin. And, Dustin, please come back in the future. We'd love to have you back. No problem. Thank you, Zeb. All right, sir. Thank you very much. Nice man, Dustin Heath, and he is the principal at Mountain View. There you go. Uh, We'd like to thank our sponsors of Cassia County School Days, and they are A Child's World at 1308 Overland in Burley and the Ambulatory Surgery Center at 1344 Highland in Burley. Number to call, 677-8888. Right now, we've got to get some of our advertisements on for our politicals, and we'd like to remind you, Carl Hansen wants your vote May 15th to be your Minidoka County Commissioner. Carl has the leadership experience as a hospital CEO for 29 years, 18 of those years at Minidoka Hospital. He's an organizer and communicator. Carl Hansen wants to address the challenges in Minidoka County and help solve them. Paid for by the Carl Hansen for Minidoka County Committee and Jason Gibbons, Treasurer. We also want to remind you, too, about a good friend of ours, and that, of course, is Jim Patrick for State Senate District 25. Senator Patrick says thank you to everyone who has supported him in the past, and he's asking for your vote again on May 15th. Jim Patrick has been a 40-year farmer and 20 years as a bank director, and he fully understands business issues and is willing to listen to your problems. And he has a great understanding of Idaho Water. Jim Patrick for State Senate again, District 25, and he wants your vote on May 15th. Paid for by Jim Patrick for Senate, District 25. Oh, just a minute. I'll be all set to go with our next guest. But first of all, wheels, we need to hear this good word for Brad Little. For governor, who can conservatives trust? Not Boise developer Tommy Alquist. Tommy Alquist's tax plan would raise taxes on everything from farm equipment to haircuts. Tommy's given thousands of dollars to liberal Democrat politicians. And Tommy didn't even vote for President Trump against Hillary Clinton. Tommy Alquist is not one of us. And Raul Labrador, he stuck taxpayers with the bill for his luxury SUV and used his campaign cash to pay his wife over $100,000. Raul Labrador's part of the swamp. Idaho needs a trusted conservative. Brad Little is pro-life, pro-marriage, and pro-Second Amendment. And Brad Little believes in lower taxes. It's why Brad Little voted for the largest tax cut in Idaho's history. And as lieutenant governor, Brad Little cut his own budget every year, saving taxpayers money. 
Brad Little, the conservative weekly <laughs> trust for governor. Paid for by Brad Little for governor. Vicki Rich, treasurer. Oh, thank you very much. And you know what I did? I forgot a birthday on Tuesday of one of our beloved lunch munchers, and she's such a very important part of our team over there, and that's Frida Flowers had a birthday on this last thir- uh, Tuesday, and I want to wish her a very happy but belated happy birthday. Frida, you are a very nice lady. Happy birthday wishes for this weekend. Tomorrow, Jerry Voss has a birthday, and on Saturday, Day, Merla Denagle, and we say happy birthday to all of you. Congratulations. Okay, let's see. Right now, we're going to go to the phone line, and our business salute this week goes to a very, very dear friend of ours, and that's Jeff over at Lee's Furniture Floors and More. Good morning, Jeff. How are you? Well, good morning, Zeb. I'm doing great. Nice to visit with you again. You know, uh, I'm, as a granddad, I've gone through some sorrowing times. My oldest grandson got hurt, as you well know. So uh, your son and you, you keep up the good work over there at Kimberly. Well, we'll try to keep him playing. You know, he does track, and so we try to follow him there, and uh, they do good there as well. Well, very well said. Now, what is happening? I know that you've got so many great items over at Lee's Furniture Floors and more that you want to talk about. Let's talk about beautification of your home for springtime with brand new carpet. You know, Zeb, I was just thinking, thank you for sharing that intro. Um, You know, this time of year when you hear a lot about politics and you hear a lot about taxes, well, I've got good news. Um, Right now, for any potential customer that comes into the store, they can come in and concentrate on something that's a little more enjoyable, like getting something for their new home. And in addition to the specials we run, we will also offer an additional um, 6% off because we're going to pay the sales tax as well on that purchase. Wow. Really? That's right. So if you come in, uh, we have some new uh, shipments that have just arrived. Uh, we have uh, some new sofas and love seats, recliners, uh, mattresses. We have a huge mattress special going right now. In fact, uh, Zeb, I've got a, uh, a Simmons uh, Beauty Sleep mattress box set, queen set, deluxe plush for only three hundred and ninety nine dollars. Mm-hmm. That's, that's for both pieces. So it's wow. a great value. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, for any customer that drives by right now, they will see outside that we have a huge selection of a number of. LVP, luxury vinyl plank pallets, out out front. Now, why are they out there? Uh, that's to share with everybody that we've just received these new shipments of flooring in. Uh, these floors are great. They're durable. They're easy to clean. They look fantastic. You can install them yourself. And we carry the largest selection that I know of in stock. And uh, we have additional uh, styles and colors available that you can come in and take a look at as well. You know, I got a great idea for you. I don't know if you want to spend the money, but why don't you hire me to come down on Fridays, my day off the radio, put one of those very nice uh, brand new recliners outside on the street sidewalk, and pay me to go to sleep and bring people in to check out the recliners. All right, but we're going to have to find another one for your horse. So uh, <laughs> let's see if we can make that happen. Okay. <laughs> You've got a great selection over there. What's that? I say you have a fantastic selection at Lee's Furniture. Yeah, thank you. You know, we've also got carpet. We've got a great special right now. Carpet your whole home for $69 a month, interest-free. Uh, it's an excellent opportunity. We carry the carpet in stock. We have great installers, Zeb. Uh, you know this. And, uh, again, with all of our furniture on sale, it's just a... a perfect opportunity right now absolutely and it's kind of a spruce up for springtime people are sick and tired of the wintertime blahs and they just want to brighten and lighten things up don't they yeah you know it makes me think also uh, when you come in and you purchase floor covering you can also get great specials on window coverings you know the sun sets a little later it rises a little more uh earlier but uh sometimes you have that sun shining into the house uh New window coverings are great because they help to regulate the sunshine and also the temperature because they provide great insulation. So window coverings, mattresses, furniture, floor covering of every kind. We pay the tax. Interest-free purchase financing for those that are interested. New shipments in stock. Zeb, we've got it all. Oh, my goodness. Plus, I want you to highlight you have a very professional and friendly staff. That's right. We've got Darren... Hillary, Morgan, Emily, Legrand, myself, um, excellent help, wonderful staff. They'll help answer any questions. Uh, we have Hillary and Emily who will do free in-home consultations with design, colors, flooring, window coverings, any, anything that you 
need, we have Zeb. Absolutely. Ladies and gentlemen, I've known these folks for a long time. Jeff is absolutely a super guy, as is the rest of the staff at Lee's Furniture Floors and More. 459 Overland and Burley. Jeff, thank you, and have a wonderful weekend. And thank you, Zeb, and good luck to you and all, all you do. All right, Take sir. Care. Thank you very much. Nice, nice man, and uh, great business. We really appreciate him over there. Uh, we're going to go over to the main studios in just a moment, but I want to remind you, my good buddy Joe Bennett, on behalf of Bennett Boys Auction Service, ho, 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 are they going to have a rip and big good sale this Saturday. The Lowry Estate Auction, 10 o'clock Saturday morning, they'll bring down the gavel, and it's located in Shoshone at 521 North, 650 West. Don't miss it. Look for the signs. Lunch is going to be provided by the Cook Shack. It is going to be a dandy sale. Absolutely great loaders, tractors, backhoes, hanging equipment, rock pickers, farm equipment, pickups, cars, trucks. Holy moly, don't miss it. It's going to start at 10 o'clock Saturday morning. The Lowry Estate Auction in Shoshone. Look for it at 521 North 650 West, managed by Bennett Boys Auction Service. Remember, no sale too big, no sale too small. The Bennett Boys, they can sell them all, and they do. Uh, let's see. We're going to go back across the river right now and uh, turn it over to wheels for a few minutes. And then we're going to come back with a very, very dear friend of mine, former Representative Bert Stevenson. And we're going to be talking about water. And I don't want you to miss this segment. Bert is very well versed on what's going on and how many sources are trying to take our water away. So we're going to send it back over to wheels. We'll be back in about three minutes. And now, back to Zeb at the Ranch on AM 1230 KBAR. To reach Zeb, call 436-2244 or toll free 1-866-927-4587. And now, here is Zeb Bell. And welcome back. In just a moment, we're going to have uh, former representative Bert Stevenson on our program. But this good word now for Tommy Alquist. Brad Little is desperate unable to defend his record of raising your taxes and increasing his pay. Professional politician Brad Little is falsely attacking conservative outsider Tommy Alquist. The truth? Conservative business leader Dr. Tommy Alquist has new ideas and a fresh approach that will move us forward. Tommy Alquist will lower taxes, cut wasteful spending, create more jobs, and enact term limits on politicians elected statewide. Like President Donald Trump is changing Washington, conservative business leader Tommy Alquist will shake up the status quo. That's why Brad Little is making false negative attacks against conservative outsider Tommy Alquist. Professional politician Brad Little is losing his campaign for governor because he raised your taxes and increased his pay. But if Brad's false attacks continue, he'll lose his reputation too. Professional politicians Labrador and Little, 29 years is long enough. Paid for by Tommy for Idaho, Orville Thompson, Treasurer. Uh, thank you very much. And right now, we're going to go to the phone line, and I get a chance to visit with a very dear friend, and I have the highest respect for his abilities and his knowledge. And we say good morning to Representative Bert Stevenson. How are you, sir? I'm really fine, Zeb. Hey, I can barely hear you, Zeb. Uh, I'll make sure. Wheels, turn that up a little bit. It has been running a little low this morning, and so you're going to have to ride that gain a little bit. Bert, is that better? Yeah, that's a little better. All right, sir. Bert, last week in the Times News, there was a story about uh, Republicans criticizing the spill of dam water to help the salmon and help the fish. What are your thoughts about this story in general before we pick it apart? Well, uh, Zeb, what's happened here is um, Judge Redden uh, several years ago uh, determined that we needed to spill some water. Uh, then Judge Redden got off of the case that the, the salmon versus the, uh, well, it, it's all of the water users on the Columbia River, whether they're uh, irrigation people, whether they're power generators or whatever. Mm-hmm. And anyway, uh, the new judge this past year determined, and don't blame it all on the judge, because uh, we have the environmental community that can use any kind of science they want and determine why 
we need to spill more water. And and so the Judge Simons uh, determined that we needed to spill more water to move the smolts out to the ocean a little quicker so that the sea lions and the other things could eat them earlier. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and that brings me up to this next point, and Wheels, you're going to have to really ride the gain on this call, please. A uh, little feedback. They are saying that by increasing the water, that it will produce larger adult salmon how in the world is more water going to produce larger fish i still can't figure that one out well zeb uh i don't know how why they fair how they figured that out any uh i guess they figure that more water gets them to the ocean faster but but i i have not uh one of the things that's the information that I read is that uh, if you get enough water going over there, then the gases is the thing that kills the, right. the smolts as they go out. Right. And so uh, it's a, it's the thing, and 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 we as the water users of the Columbia and the Snake River uh, realize that they can. But why do we have to go to these excesses this year? The spill is a considerably more than it's been in years past. We've had more salmon coming back. Uh, one of the reasons they haven't come back is the conditions in the ocean uh, has been negative for the salmon. Uh, and then we get the uh, uh, sea lions and, uh, and those critters that eat the fish as they come back in. And they're endangered, too. So tell me how you have two endangered species, one eating the other, who gets preference? Absolutely a great point. Bert, won't there be a lot of costs associated and assimilated to this spill? Won't it cost a lot of money uh, as far as hurting the transportation and the barging? Well, uh, Zeb, uh, because uh, uh, BPA, which which takes care of the electricity for for uh, a lot of this area, Raft River Electric, uh, United Electrics all gets their power from uh, Bonneville Power, and uh, they anticipate that it will cost about $40 uh, million dollars in lost power sales, uh, plus what we lose in the barging. Uh, the barging probably won't be quite as serious as, uh, as the uh, power because of the, the year's uh, the, the amount of water we have this year, Zeb. Isn't this just one more little notch on the pistol of the environmentalists because their main goal is to take out all the dams? Isn't that really the bottom line? Well, uh, and, and they're really pushing to take out the four on the lower snake, the Ice Harbor, <clears throat> uh, lower Monumental and Little Goose, and the lower Granite. Uh, these dams provide about four percent of the of the power generation but it allows them when the wind goes down and when the clouds come in it allows them to uh, regulate the power in their grid and 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 they're a really vital part more so in the, in the regulating ability rather than the uh, mon or the uh, production and and so we really need them well, Bert, isn't this really turned into, especially with our water usage here in the state of Idaho, a real partisan issue as far as the Democrats on the left are saying that the dams have got to go and the fish should take uh, anything over human beings and the Republicans are the opposite? What's going on here? Why can't we have common sense prevail instead of partisan politics? Well, Zeb, uh, when you can answer that question... Uh... <laughs> We'll all be <laughs> saluting you, sir. <laughs> no, but really, it, it seems well, like they have to be in lockstep. The thing that happens, it, it has become a partisan deal, because your, your Republican legislators from uh, Washington, uh, Montana, Oregon didn't get, they didn't sign on on the letter that they've sent to, to ask for relief on this uh, judge's decision, but... Uh, uh, Idaho did, uh, 
And so, and they signed in on that. And so, what we're doing, and then immediately, uh, Senator McMurray from uh, Washington uh, and her crew come out and said, we have to protect the salmon. We realize that the salmon are being protected. Uh, if you want to really protect them, uh, don't allow fishing and hunting or fishing of the salmon. Uh, the tribes can take about all the fish they want. So. Well, let's talk about that and be very blunt about this. I have many, many times traveled along the banks and the shores of the Columbia during the summer months and have literally uh, had to close the windows because of the stench of the dead and rotting salmon and fish that the Indian tribes have thrown up on the bank and wasted. Why can't there be regulation there instead of always against us and farmers? Well, Zeb, I don't know why. I found it really interesting. Patty McMurray said that this was only going to cost the households a dollar on the lost generating power. I find that really interesting because uh, one more dollar here and another dollar there. Yeah. But but the $40 million is, is what they anticipate will be used. So you know you're affecting $40 million households. The thing I'm most concerned about with this whole story is that on a nationwide level, Bert, we're seeing a push under the table to get rid of any of the fossil fuel sources or any of the dam power sources, hydroelectric, whatever, and rely solely on wind and solar, and you know that just isn't going to fly. Well, is that the news media will always pick up. There was, I think, one day last week that uh, California, Southern California, uh, didn't use any uh, coal-fired electricity. Uh, that gets headlines, man. But uh, they didn't talk about the days that uh, the lights dimmed and uh, and they needed it. They Absolutely. Never about that. Absolutely. Well, with the state of our water right now, uh, I wanted to ask you also, this seems like we're going into a fairly good, reliable water season. Is that correct? Uh, Zeb, we really are. In fact, I've had several calls from some of your neighbors uh, concerned about the amount of water that's going uh, past Milner right now. Uh, the Bureau is spilling water to try and make room for the the water uh, as it comes off of the uh, for Palisades, they're lowering that. Uh, we're going to have a, a good water year, uh, even though uh, we're spilling a lot of water now. If we don't, we may be back where we were in 97 mm -hmm. and, and uh, afraid of washing out the pipelines across uh, their Twin Falls. Uh, this morning I pulled off uh, Henry's Fork uh, is 128 percent of normal. That's the 10 or the 30-year average from uh, uh, 80 to 2010. Uh, the Upper Snake Basin above Palisades were 139 percent of normal there. This is uh, the water equivalent, snow water equivalent. Uh, the Little uh, Lost and the Birch Creek is 137 percent. Mm -hmm. uh, Wood River, uh, we're in the 109, 105, so we're in pretty good shape. But then you get into northern Idaho, and you're into 149 to 144, so. Okay. okay on the Clearwater and the uh, northern Panhandle. So. Bert, we have a caller with a question. He is struggling, but this is a, a somewhat normal thing. Uh, they're always short of water. Mm-hmm. In the ways. Okay. Bert, we have a caller with a question. Go ahead, caller, quickly, please. You're on the air. Thank you. Uh, could he address this situation? Because we've got this overage of water supply, and they're going to require that be dumped to um, assist the fish getting down to the ocean and back. Now, the, the environmentalists and the Democrats are really pushing hard on we got to have that much water every year. We have to have a little more, a little more, a little more. But I'm aware that there is an island, and it was created by the government, out at the mouth of the Columbia. And it's not inhabited except 
by a seal population that has exploded because the, the little fish going down the Columbia from Idaho and uh, North Idaho and, and Central Idaho had just made a choice, choice thing for the seal to live in. And have they addressed that? And is the environmentalist going to address that situation? Because that's where most of the smelt and small fish are taken by those seals. I agree. I agree. I'll take my answer off the air. Very well stated, sir. Bert, what about that? I mean, this is ridiculous that we're feeding the seals with uh, fish that aren't going to get a chance to live, and our water is the culprit that's being taken away from us. Uh, Zeb, the, uh, 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 Judge Simons is the thing that he asked for in this new biological opinion that uh, they're in the process of gathering now. <clears throat> I don't know how much they're going to include that on the uh, islands down there and the turns and the and the sea lines, but uh, because we those have been included in the the last biological opinion, this new biological opinion, they're focusing on uh, taking out the. Uh, Poor Lower Snake River dams. Oh, my goodness. Bert, let me ask you this, and I don't mean to sound hard-nosed on this, but it is a fact. Why can't we, the state of Idaho, just tell them, no, no, you're not going to get this extra water. If we can have somebody as obtuse as Governor Jerry Brown in California say no to going along with federal laws on immigration and allowing illegal aliens to run rampant, why can't we say, no, you're not going to take our water? Zeb, we're doing all we can to keep Idaho as control of the water that's in Idaho. Once it leaves Idaho, then it becomes uh, water that can be uh, regulated and used by Washington and Oregon. Uh, and and that's, a, that's a positive thing for us because they work with us reasonably well. Oregon lasts because they're really more environmental than they want the fish. Uh, have a have a higher rating on the on the rung of the right. ladder than right. than Idaho would like. To have. Uh, how on a scale of one to ten, Bert? And you've been doing this for a long time, many years, serving the Idaho public. How on a scale of one to ten, how concerned are you that matters with water are going to get much worse here in the state? Uh, Zeb, I have a real concern because of, of one judge being able to, uh, and, and not only one judge, but, but your federal agencies. Right now, we'd like to, for Idaho Power, and sometimes you ought to get Idaho Power's people on there. They're, they're desperately uh, trying to get relicensed for Idaho Power's facilities in the uh, Hell's Canyon, the three there. The problem they're having is is Oregon wants to bring uh, salmon, reintroduce salmon above those, and uh, Idaho has. Uh, we have laws that Idaho won't. We share that river. How do you get fish to go up half of the river and not the other half? I haven't figured that one out, but uh, this is this is what they're trying to do. And so you worry about the federal agencies coming in and say. I'm speaking now of FERC and and uh, the power people coming in and saying, "Yeah, you've got to do that." To uh, and they're doing it under the Clean Water Act. Absolutely, you know, Bert. I want to say thank you to you. I'm flat out of time, but I say thank you to a dear friend. You and Elaine mean a lot to us, and thanks for your time on sharing about the water issues in the state of Idaho. God bless you, my dear friend, and come back soon, please. Wish I were more eloquent, but thanks for the opportunity. Oh, God bless you, sir. Thank you very, very much. He's not only a former representative, but he's a very dear friend, Bert Stevenson, and I've got a lot of respect for his abilities. Thank you very much. Uh, wheels over at the station, if you would, please. This word for Fred Wood. Re-elect Representative Fred Wood, District 27. Here's Fred's views on money and politics. 
Zeb, 85% of Idaho citizens believe we should have more financial transparency and disclosure in our political system. As chairman of the Interim Committee on Campaign Finance Reform, I will continue to work tirelessly to bring real transparency and disclosure to money and politics in Idaho. Vote May 15th. Representative Fred Wood, District 27, paid for by the committee to re-elect Fred Wood, Steve Westfall, Treasurer. Thank you very much. And right now, let's get a weather forecast on here. I've got a feeling that it's going to be a nice weekend outside. Let's check it out in just a minute. But right now, Scarrows Meats at 331 North Road. Oh, my goodness. Delicious meats for you and your family, your neighbors. Oh, have a barbecue this weekend. Scarrows Meats, 331 North Road. Road Jerome, the number to call, 324-7657, or go to their website, scarrowsmeats.com. Delicious meats, the breakfast sausages and the bacons and the bratwurst and the smoked hams and the marinated prime ribs. Oh, what a treat. You get a hold of them today, Scarrows Meats, Jerome, and they are delicious. Right now, here's Gina with the weather. The days are getting warmer and calmer as we make our way towards the weekend. Here's your forecast for Zebeth the Ranch. We are expecting partly sunny skies today with a high of 62. Winds out of the east-northeast right around 12 miles an hour, gusts as high as 23 miles an hour. For tonight, partly cloudy skies, still a little on the breezy side, but we are expecting a low of 39. For tomorrow, sunny skies with a high of 64. Tomorrow night, clear with a low of 40. For Saturday, even better. Sunny skies, high near 66, still a little on the breezy side. For Saturday night, clear and 40. For Sunday, we do have a 20% chance of uh, thunderstorms in the forecast, mostly in the afternoon. Other than that, sunny skies with a high of almost 70. For Monday, that could continue with a chance of rain showers before noon, mostly sunny by Monday afternoon and a high of 64. That is your weather for Zebeth Rand. Thank you, Gina. You know what? I don't mind hearing that word thunderstorms or thunder showers. It's sure music to my ears in place of snow <laughs> and cold and wind. Anyway, our weather brought to you this hour by Scarrow's Meats, 331 North Road, Jerome. The number to call, 324-7657. And remember... Remember the delicious meats over at Scarrow's Meats. They are changing the way we eat one delicious bite at a time at Scarrow's Meats. Really, really great people. Uh, as I state last week, and I'll state it again this week, you, I really appreciate your patience. And we're at a very busy time right now, and deservedly so. We have a lot of people that are running for public office and various uh, capacities, and we want to make sure we get all their ads on. And I appreciate your patience, well, along with our normally scheduled advertisements and then also their political announcements. You know, bear with us, and we're going to fly through this and go all the way up to May 15th as a team. So don't get all upset and uh, say, oh, you're running too many commercials. We're running the people that want to get their voices heard for you to go to the polls on May 15th. Don't forget that. I want to say a big thank you to our major sponsor, and that's your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers, with a big spring tire sale going on right now. Holy moly. All the tires, all the different tread designs for all the different driving conditions, cars, pickups, SUVs, horse trailers, boat trailers, everything right there at any of the seven locations of your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers. Don't forget that they also have the best in brake service, front end alignment, shocks and struts, batteries, holy cow. But above all, above all, service. They really take care of you. Stop in and see Lane and Rupert, Dave on Blue Lakes and Twin, Mike and Buell, Mike and Jerome, the Twist family and Paul, nice people, David, or I should say Daniel on Pole Line in Twin Falls, and Randy on Overland in Burley. Absolutely the best. Your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers. What's cooking for Monday? We've got a great list of people coming on the air, and uh, Megan Barth, and uh, Julio Rivera talking about illegal aliens going into California. We've got a full list, so don't miss a minute of it. We'll start at 8.06 in the morning and go to 11. And we really appreciate your listenership and your questions and your comments. And by the way, too... 
I want to mention quickly my weekly blog, Cow Pies and Coffee Cups. Go to my website, and that's zebbell.com. And if you want to receive cow pies, just type in your address. We'll make sure that it gets to you. And we'll be here at 12.30 a.m. K-Bar on Monday at 8.06 and streaming live all over the world on zebbell.com. And always remember, the way things were are the way things ought to be. Here now is a good word for Tommy Alquist and then... And Wheels will take us up to CBS News.